I used to go to camp with my dad at a seasonal campground from 2005 to 2007 in upstate NY in the middle of Adirondack forests, and about a 20-minute drive from the closest town. It is now an agricultural farm and closed for unknown reasons. Anyway, families would bring their campers here and just leave them yearly. We were one of those families that did this. Luckily, there were other teens there around this time and we all really hit it off, we ranged from 13 to 17 years old within those years. This story takes place in the summer of 2006. A few of my camp friends and I were bored at around 1 pm one day, so we decided to hike into the woods that were behind all the campsites. We'll call my friends Jan, Bridget, Helen, and Aster. There were some well-traveled trails not far in, but we had already walked them many times. We decided to cut across the trails and go deeper into the woods. Eventually, we end up in an uphill, 30-foot wide clearing that had what appeared to be a car to the right in the distance. Aster immediately sprints to the car and exclaims that it is indeed a very old, very rusted and abandoned car. The rest of us walk to our very enthusiastic friend. I remember feeling something was very off about that car and requested that we all get away from it. Aster laughs and jokingly says it could be rigged with bombs. Bridget hit him in the arm and yells at him shut up. Get away from that car. Who knows what could be inside it. Odd, I thought to myself, maybe she feels the same way I do. We start to walk past the car upward toward what looked like a larger clearing. Helen grabbed my right arm and walked beside me seemingly terrified. Me being about 15 at the time, I welcomed her clinging to my arm and really didn't notice her terror. As we reached the large clearing, the ground flattened. Directly in front of us, there is a pond that is completely still. To the left of us, there's a yellow, two-story house that seems to be abandoned. This clearing is completely surrounded by the rest of the woods. Upon seeing this, I remember the feeling of dread washing over me. Meanwhile, Aster and Jan are running toward the house. Bridget, Helen and I all called out to them and told them to come back and not go near the house. Instead, they noticed an open window and they both climbed inside. As soon as Bridget saw them doing this, she yelled out fine. If you two want to have sex in some creepy house, be my guest. Her scream seemed to fall flat with no echo almost like it was blocked and couldn't make it to the house. It was eerie. Bridget finally looked over at Helen and I sounding defeated. She said, come on, let's just go back to camp. This place is weird. We concur and start to head back toward the downward smaller clearing when we hear what sounds like Jan's scream. We look back to see Aster and Jan are already out of the house and almost to us. They are both whiter than freshly bleached sheets and are motioning for us to leave. The hike back to camp was pretty uneventful, but Aster and Jan refused to tell us what they saw in there. Aster was still trying to act silly and cool, but he kept glancing behind us. Jan didn't say a word the entire time. We got back to camp and it was 5.30 PM. It really didn't feel like we were gone for that long. Whole thing was weird. We all agreed we'd meet up later that night after we ate and showered etc. Later that night, around 10.30 pm, the same group of us all met up near the registration building because it had a light similar to a street light. We decided to head down into a field that was at the entrance of the campground beside the dirt road leading from the road back to camp. It was a new moon that night and we could see the stars more clearly than ever before. It was the brightest I have ever personally seen them. We all exchanged spooky stories in that dark field for quite some time. For some inexplicable reason, all five of us stood up at the same time and began to walk back to the dirt road heading back to camp. As we reached the light by the registration office, we all then simultaneously turned around and the light above us flickers out. We all see a tall, bipedal figure moving in the field we were just in. It moved across the field quickly and silently. Chills went up and down my spine and it felt like the cold was trying to reach into my brain itself. The figure was darker than darkness itself and appeared to be taller than all of us, hunched and almost appeared to have spikes protruding from it in some way. We were frozen. 
None of us moved at all until the light above us suddenly came back on. The figure was gone, but it was unnaturally cold still for a summer night. We all ran to our respective camps. Fast forward to winter 2009. I was telling an ex-girlfriend of mine, let's call her Kitty, about the above story. She is the type of girl that says that she's very sensitive to paranormal events and is always intrigued about them as opposed to being afraid most of the time. She somehow convinces me that she needs to go to the camp I used to go to, but it has been closed and is now the agricultural farm I mentioned above. I decided to drive her and I up there one night in my 2000 Buick Century Limited. Mind you, this car was a beast and could make it through snow with ease due to a really nice traction control system and winter tires. We arrive around 10.30 PM and the dirt road isn't plowed out, no surprise. I wasn't worried and decided to drive in any way. My car's a champ and is going through just fine. I am passing the registration building and get that same feeling of dread I felt long ago on that day at the house. The engine cuts. The car's power is gone. The car refuses to start. I look over at my ex and she's staring straight ahead there looking at us. What the actual? I try to start the car again and it starts normally, but my traction control is no longer working and the time has been reset to 12 o'clock. The car is spinning the tires somehow. We're still stuck. My headlights were on and I happened to look at the trees and see multiple of the same figures my camp friends and I saw, running between the trees in the distance and my blood went cold. I yelled at this shit, I'm getting us out of here. I turned the car off and started again. Traction control light is gone and I am able to move the car. I slam it into reverse and reverse down the dirt road back to the main road that will head back into civilization. I slam it in drive and the supercharger and that baby was one of the sweetest and most relieving sounds I had heard that night. The drive back has forest on the same side of the road as the camp for pretty much 10 of the 20 mile trip to town. My ex is staring out the window. Out of nowhere, she mutters something quietly. I tell her I can't hear her and ask if she's alright. She doesn't look at me, but I am able to make out what she said this time they're following us. They want us. They're the most evil thing I have ever felt and they want us to go into the house with them. I tell her that it's going to be okay and that we'll be safe soon. I tell her to stop looking out the window and just focus on clearing her mind. We made it back into town and I went into the closest gas station that was open and grabbed water and a snack for both my ex and I. I asked the clerk what time it was because both of our phones were dead and I wanted to reset my clock in my car. It's currently 3.49 AM, you sure are out early. I just nodded and paid for my things. I brought my ex to my place so she wouldn't get in trouble for getting in so late since she lived with her mom. We never spoke of it again and broke up about a month later. I have told others about this story and I have had many tell me to bring them there. I refuse to bring them or even tell them where this place might even be. Nothing can explain the weird things in that place and I shudder to this day still thinking about it. This is my most recent Wendigo encounter in DeWitt County, Texas. January 12, 2019 around 8 PM. Now I'm going to be honest. I chose to go out on this particular night because my town was having a little ghost tour at the haunted hospital. I was lonely and wanted to at least see others having fun. It was 8 PM when I left the house and planned to be back within an hour. I have a routine of circling my town in the evening because I just like patrolling and there's always things creeping about after nightfall. I made my way to the haunted hospital and once I got there I saw flashlights inside the windows and heard laughter. That's nice I thought. Seeing others have fun made me smile and got rid of some of the loneliness I was feeling. This was the halfway point of my walk and I started my second half heading home now. There were some woods on the opposite side of town now but nothing impressive until I got to the last quarter of my walk. Now I was passing the baseball field on my left with a large wheat field on my right. This wheat field used to be a large extension of the woods but was cleared out for growing wheat. 
I continued again and crossed the small bridge that went over a creek and past another section of woods. I was now headed towards an old metal building that has recently been turned into a place for making gates and fences. It was about 9 p.m. now. This building had two small white houses beside it and a stretch of dirt road wrapping around the backside of it before returning to normal asphalt road. Now at night this place seems pretty scary but this was one of my favorite places to hang out at night and is a normal path I take my walks through. As I was coming up to the dirt road I saw a very tall 8 to 10 foot pale figure, with lanky arms almost dragging the ground, about 40 feet ahead of me briskly walk from the white houses to the woods. I stopped walking. What was that I thought? Its size confused me so much that I had forgotten my previous encounters with a smaller version of it. After a few minutes of standing there, I convinced myself to continue walking forward. I mean I was an adventurous person and there's no way I was just going to turn tail and go home when I just saw something so odd and out of place. Not even 15 seconds into walking forward this sudden heavy sense of dread overcame me like a giant weight crashing down on my shoulders. My instincts were telling me something was really really wrong. I turned my iPhone light on and shined it at the woods. Nothing. I kept walking while keeping my head on a swivel looking in all directions to keep my surroundings in check. About the fifth or sixth time I looked at the woods I saw it. A huge bleached white humanoid figure crouched on all fours. It was easily still five to six feet tall even though it was bent over. Its black eyes paralyzed me. It had a big round bald head and an extremely emaciated body, void of all hair with very long almost dislocated looking arms and legs. Its legs were like a flamingo bird's at the knee as it bent backwards instead of forward. I took all this in in a matter of seconds. Suddenly it reminded me of a praying mantis when it swayed back and forth while staring as if deciding whether to attack or not. This broke me out of my trance and I ran as fast as I could. I didn't look back until I had ran a block. Out of breath and scared as heck I finally took a glance back. I didn't see anything in sight. I didn't hear it chase me either. Maybe it was just stalking those people in those two little white houses and was waiting for me to go away to go back to its business. Maybe it didn't want anything to do with me. But that wasn't the end. I got home, took a shower, and turned out the lights before I hopped in bed when suddenly there was something tapping on my window. Tap tap tap. Three taps and nothing else. I laid in my bed that night wondering whether it had followed me home or not. A string of bad luck ensued afterwards the following weeks. I was constantly burning stuff on the stove that was relatively easy to make and I was an excellent cook on top of that. My dog started going nuts at night growling and barking at night in the living room and at the front door which she has never ever done as she is the quietest sweetest dog you'll ever meet. And finally I got deathly sick for three weeks straight with no sure sign of what I had gotten. 103 fever, vomiting with blood, diarrhea with blood, sneezing, coughing, sore throat, migraines, nerve spasms, stuffy and dry nose, it changed constantly, severe stomach aches, aching all over really especially in my bones, other lesser entities taking advantage of my state trying to latch onto me, and slight insomnia. I've had smaller strings of bad luck before, after hearing its mimicry trying to lure me into the forest or seeing it one other time but I didn't see any details, but nothing ever this extreme. I don't go into the woods alone anymore. Sorry it's been so long guys. After talking to people who know about and study this type of thing we've come to the solution it may have been a forest giant. A subcategory of fairy or fae. They have many names and they are not what you expect. I also came to the conclusion there may have been a small one living my house for years. It has been gone for a good while now though. An encounter, as published by a Christian friend, my family and friends were up in the Sierras outest of Yosemite, when two rakes approached us around midnight. There were five tents with people inside. My son was with me. I yelled out for everyone to start praying, 
The moment these two rakes started their banshee blather at top volume. They never got closer than 50 feet and usually only stuck around, three nights in a row, for about half an hour. No problems otherwise. Also, we talked about it over coffee the next morning. None of us ever felt any fear and stayed calm and relaxed. And we all knew exactly what these things did in 2015. He gives you the confidence you need and it's no sweat at all with these creatures. You have power over them with the blood of the lamb. Not sure what I saw. Seeking help. I live in SE Michigan suburbs. But where I live is pretty rural. Everyone around me owns multiple acres of land and I have about an acre. I am surrounded by trees, fall cleanup is. I am also not far from marshland. I feel like a crazy person, but here we go. The last couple months when I let my dog out for night potty he stands on the deck and stares at the same spot. Never really thought anything of it. We have a ton of wildlife. Deer, coyotes, etc. until last night. I went out with him and he was fixated on the normal spot. I walked over to the railing next to the dog and just as I made it the seven feet to cross the porch I heard a scream that sounded like two cats killing each other while also killing an infant human. Obviously I was startled, chalked it up to coyotes, grabbed my dog's collar and started to retreat inside. As I was dragging my super upset dog inside I glanced towards the noise. Just outside fence I saw two clear reflective eyes. I then watched whatever it was clear a 5 feet fence like it was nothing, it looked significantly larger than a coyote but I was being skeptical, still thinking it was a coyote I kept watching. It then managed to scurry up a tree and was significantly larger than any wildlife I'd seen around, definitely not a coyote, where I got a decent look at it while it screamed another time, launched itself out of the tree and that was that. I locked my door and peaced out. Wish I had more. Any suggestions or if you think it may be something else I'm open to suggestions. Thanks in advance. First crawler sighting. I've never really been all that into the, the cryptid communities, but these last few days I've looked into everything I could find, because I saw something in the woods few days ago. I've come to the conclusion that it was a crawler, based on its appearance movement and the sounds made. This is a description of the situation and sighting. On September 7th, I was walking alone in the woods it was around 7. It was at the Titabawa Sea Nature Reserve in Michigan. I go there often to observe the nocturnal wildlife, next time I'll get one hell of a lot more than I bargained for. I had strayed some 20 yards from the trail, with only a flashlight to light the way. My whole family knew where I was going where I was. It was dead dry leaves in the ground which made loud crunches as I went. I had had believed to scare any animals away when I was setting up my base for the night. I was lying down in my tent, when I heard a human scream. But I realized something was off, it didn't sound exactly human, warbled in some weird one I couldn't and still can't exactly place. So I grabbed a hunting knife, unzipped my tent flap and crawled out with my flashlight. And shone it around. The screaming had stopped, replaced with high-pitched almost squirrel-like chattering. My light found two bright red eyes, even brighter than a deer in the lights. It appeared about 100 feet away, and I slowly approached it. I was out here for seeing animals, and I was still slightly cloudy-minded from sleep. So as I got close it started screaming again, it wasn't the same scream, though. It was, primal, it could be described. I stopped, but the creature came toward into my light, moving like a spider. It was stick thin and pale, with no ears, no nose, blank eye sockets, and a very thin mouth. It seemed to be about 8 feet tall, but like I said it was moving like a spider so it was hard to tell. I screamed, and it moved away incredibly, and possibly fast. I ran into my tent, stayed awake all night and didn't hear anything else. In the morning I found no tracks from where the creature had been, no one in my family believes this happened. I did the research that lead me to believe that it was a crawler. 
Hope you enjoyed this, and can give me some feedback about what you think happened and why it did what it did. I live in the suburbs in Arizona, right by a mountain preserve. There are plenty of washes around, we get coyotes, bobcats, raccoons, the usual. We have plenty of chickens and five dogs. One wolf dog, one big male Akita, three Anatolian shepherds, two are male puppies though. The dogs are inside dogs, but we let them into the yard and they have free roam. We have a six foot wall around a large yard. We have neighbors on all three sides of the wall. One of the houses to the side is vacant, and the one directly behind us the owner hasn't been home for about a month. On both sides of his house is a wash. About a week ago at dusk, my sister had called for all the dogs to come inside. She saw one of the pups walking away from her and into some bushes out of sight and called to it. I asked her what she was calling to, and she said the pup. I said no right here. Which he was. All the dogs were accounted for. We just brushed it off as strange but didn't think much of it. Last night, around 12.30 at night, my father and I are awake in the family room. We hear a large bang from outside, which sounds like a trash can lid closing. So we send out the Akita, and we grab lights and head outside. We check the trash cans, nothing is disturbed as far as we can tell. I noticed my sister has come to the door because she heard the bang too. I head back in to talk to her, when my dad pops his head in and asks if we let out the puppies. We say no, and he gets mad and responds that he's right there outside. The Akita we let outside is standing next to my father. Our four other dogs are laying right inside. We watch as what is not our pup, but looks like his backside, walk behind our greenhouse and out of sight. The same dog that my sister had seen the other day. Same size. Same color. Same curly tail. Both times, we only saw its backside. There's no chance this breed is running wild in Arizona. That pup has also recently gotten a scar across his muzzle, but we thought it was from the other dogs picking on him more than usual lately. He is also the only dog that barks at his reflection at night in the windows. Our dogs usually run around the yard day or night playing. In the past few days they have been hanging around the door while they are outside, or around us when we go outside. They have been uncomfortable recently, which is weird for them. The five together in the yard fear nothing. The smallest are literally the two male puppies weighing in at 70 pounds each. What we saw looked exactly like him. ATL East what we saw which was his backside. We didn't follow because of everything I read on these subs say not to. And not knowing what it was I wasn't about to take the chance without some guidance. There is no chance this is a wild dog hopping our six foot fence. There are no wild Anatolian shepherds in the area, it's more of a rare breed. Any thoughts on what it could be or what it wants? Also side note, we usually don't hear other dogs barking at night. We've heard more than ever recently only on days that we have not seen the dog. Updates, from dusk to dawn one of us goes out and walks with the dogs, we also bought a new stronger flashlight that lights up the area pretty nicely. We have cut slash cleaned up a lot of the brush so there's less hiding spots. However, when we walk the dogs at night, they do their business and head back to the door even before we do. Have never known them to not want to be outside. Have not seen anything since the two sightings, although it's only been a few days. We have heard on two different nights, a large pack of coyotes in the neighborhood, and even heard they got two neighbor's dogs. And when I say here, I mean it's 1am and we hear the howling and fighting and the losing side. The coyotes are not the ones making the dogs uncomfortable, we had one jump the wall in the past and all of our dogs went after it. It couldn't get back over fast enough. So still concerned because they aren't comfortable again yet and not sure why. We'll update again if we see something else. I posted this a couple hours ago and someone told me to look into crawlers. 
If anyone knows if a crawler would target a person or people please tell me. I'm thinking if it is there's something in my area drawing them here, I always have an uneasy and malicious feeling whenever I go to this one line of houses behind some trees that surround me. So I've had a slight problem around my house for a bit over a year, I'm in a southern town in Michigan and I live right next to the woods, my house is less than a meter away from the trees. I'm surrounded by it for nearly a mile on each side if we're not counting the road. Last year in October I was outside with a couple friends at about 11 p.m. at night, we were near a park down the street and suddenly a large black mass comes out of the darkness, it was a dog I figured, but oddly tall, about up to my shoulders for reference I'm 5 feet 6 inches, and stood about 6 feet away, it had a deep bark and we OFC ran. This happened for the next few nights anywhere near the park. The only time I saw its eyes was the last night, they were green and reflected like a lamp, may I add every time this happened it didn't matter if we literally had a light straight on it we couldn't see its features or anything, the park is fairly well lit too. Another odd instance was when my friend and I were on a walk again about 4 am in December of 2020, roughly a couple months after, and we had sat down in a mailbox, I had a bad feeling and felt the need to go back fast but my friend needed a break we had been walking for a bit, so we didn't go. Less than two minutes later we hear this human-like scream from all around us, it sounded like it was traveling in a circle getting closer, it had a gurgling and odd tone to it that made me think it wasn't human, either way we ran back. I figured it was coyotes or something so I researched some of the animals calls from near me, none got even close to matching. In February of this year my sister was out with a couple others, they had stopped at that same park again to chill for a bit, around 2 am, and heard that same high pitched screen gurgle sound from all around them and once again, bolted home. Everything was chill for a bit up until early October late September ish my sister and I went on a walk to get the mail. Around 9 pm, on our way back I said we should walk faster and she agreed, having a bad feeling as well. We suddenly heard what sounded like a cracking cough from a bird, at an ear bleeding frequency that was so loud. The street light in that area went out for a second as well. I would have told myself it was a bird but the only thing was is that the birds in my area were gone at this point. Literally last week, late October, around 8 pm, I was taking a walk with a friend to watch the sunset, we had walked over to another subdivision a bit away from us and went to the park there. After walking for out 45 minutes, my friend was persistent on going so against my better judgment I did. They sat in the gazebo for a moment but I couldn't keep my guard down and it seemed like something was by the trees. I take a closer look and see a creature that's pure white speeding towards us. It was running weird but that's all I could say, it looked like something was rotating on it. Either way we bolted, got home about 30 minutes later. The reason I'm even posting this for help is because it's getting out of hand, about an hour ago early November, 8 pm, my sister, friend, and I went to go for a walk, I had a rotting pumpkin and my mom told me to go throw it in the woods, we walked to the back to do so and we see a large white figure speeding past us just behind the trees, I wanna say it was a deer but it was too large and white to be one. I just need to know what this is, it's been terrorizing me and everyone around me for a while, I've even looked into calling an expert but I don't know what I'd say, help? I'll try to keep this short as it's not a super exciting story. Back in high school, my friends and I would go ghost hunting, live in Lincoln, Nebraska, on the weekends by driving for mics outside of city limits until the roads turned into minimum maintenance roads. On one such journey, in my mom's Ford Explorer, we had the car break down on us, in the middle of nowhere miles from city limits. As soon as we got out of the cars, we all noticed how the cows on either side of the fences were mooing and walking closer and closer to us. We figured they were hungry. This was around 2005 so cell phone reception was not the best outside city limits where we were. We had finally gotten a hold of one of our friends to come and get us, and also arranged a tow truck to come get the car. 
Unbeknownst to our friend we first contacted, thanks to crummy reception and roaming cell phones, my mom came out and picked all of us up. By the time she had gotten to us, the cows were on either side of the fence to us, circling us, only divided by the road we were on. Meanwhile, our friend was driving out to our location, again not knowing we had been picked up, when she spotted something dark, large and running very fast out in the fields, Nebraska, so lots of flat land, which made her really uncomfortable. She noticed this figure getting closer as she got to our location and decided to turn around and go back home, getting spooked. As she was driving back, going around 55 miles per hour, a large black figure jumped from the ditch on the side of the road, hit the side of her car, got up and jumped the fence and ran away. She said it had a black tail and teeth like a wolf. It left tufts of hair in her car door. I don't know if she ever sent it anywhere to be tested. But I saw the hair. What really freaked me out, too, was that I had another friend, who didn't even know this other girl, tell me a story of a very similar figure they saw running out in the fields a few weeks prior. She said they could see it running, keeping up with their car, then, I can't remember the order, but I believe this was it, went from running on two legs to four and just sped off in front of them, well, it was to their side out in a field, I have always wondered what this was, and have never been able to get a good explanation. Then I stumbled upon this sub today and holy s does it sound like the creature my friend saw. I can't wait to read more and would love any additional reading if anyone felt inclined to share. My late husband Jack and I were taking care of my mom at the time. She took daily walks both am and pm and we had gone around the corner of a street, maybe two streets away passing by an empty lot. I estimate the time between 5.30 pm and 6 pm, so approaching dusk and now we were about 20 feet from the fence surrounding it and out of a shadow this enormous black dog appears. Like the size of a huge Great Dane but pitch black and the head of a wolf and what looked like glowing eyes. It traveled the length of the fence turning its massive head at us. Um, did you see that? I gasped. I can tell you it was so black and terrifying looking we were shocked. We had heard stories of strange phenomena in Sedona. At first I thought oh it's a stray dog but it was huge and its body must have been what looked like 7 feet in length and just enormous in breadth and width. Its legs were huge as well and it just appeared in the most frightening way. Just walking in her neighborhood like it was stalking us. We only saw it for a few minutes but it was freaky to say the least and it moved swiftly in a strange hulking gait along the fence. Perhaps guarding the property? I don't know. But you just ran an article about hellhounds and this creature was about as close to that I can remember. That did not look like any dog I'd ever seen. But like that huge black dog in Harry Potter. Really weird. Just had to share this because you think oh I'm imagining this but seeing the huge back shape and hearing it walking through the bushes. You feel you are witnessing the unexplained. A warning for those to come. February 23, 1928. I am writing this down so that what exists on this property may never be forgotten. I only hope that I can warn those who will inevitably come after me. My family has owned this 120-acre farm for more than three generations. Unfortunately, however, it will all end with me. My parents had a total of three children with myself being the oldest. I never did end up getting married and my two younger brothers were involved in a tragic wolf attack one day while working at the far end of our field by the edge of the forest. As soon as our father heard the screaming he grabbed his rifle that he always kept beside him and started running. He was too far away, though. He ran as fast as he could with all of his adrenaline, but all he was able to do was watch as the wolf ripped a hole in his one son's stomach and sank its teeth deeply into the other's neck. He shot at the wolf and missed. It stared at him without the least bit of fear in its eyes and slowly released my brother's neck from its teeth before scurrying into the forest. My father was never the same after that day, and he would never talk about it. 
The small town we lived in was also affected deeply by this back then. The story made the headlines in the local newspaper. They were only the ages 12 and 14. About three years later when I was in my late teens my mother fell very ill from something the doctors at the time couldn't diagnose. She would get frequent headaches and she would slip in and out of unresponsive, coma-like states. One day, however, she never came out of it and her body slowly shut down over the course of a week. After this my father's mental stability began to fade away. I began to notice that every night he would sit on the dark front porch with his rifle in his lap just staring off into the distance. Whenever I would approach him about it he would always have a worried look on his face and give me the same wild answer. That wolf is still out there. He would say. Something ain't right about that wolf. One night I awoke to a series of gunshots. I swiftly raised up and sat on the edge of my bed. There was an odd orange glow lighting up the curtains of my bedroom window. It flickered for a few moments and then it was gone. I quickly made my way downstairs. When I reached the front door I heard my father yelling. You won't take anything else away from me, he shouted. Go back to hell where you came from, you vicious beasts. I flipped the porch lights on and I opened the door to see him attempting to reload his magazine. His arms were shaking uncontrollably causing him to drop his handful of bullets. Dad. I called to him. What the hell are you shooting at? You're going to hit some of the cattle. I scanned the field in front of us but all I could see was the sea of corn swaying in the cool night breeze. My father bent down to pick up the bullets and turned his head to look at me. There were tears running down his face. He opened his mouth to say something but at first all that came out was a choppy exhale caused by his violent shaking. Then he spoke. I saw them, they didn't know I was here, they didn't think I could see. He trailed off for a few moments before saying something that truly perplexed me. They, they aren't from here. His eyes widened as if the reality of the situation made its way back to him. Come on, son. We have to get inside before they come back. He said sternly. I followed him through the front doorway and gave one last look toward the field before shutting and locking the door. I then went into the living room to find my father passed out on the couch with his rifle under his arm. I grabbed it and emptied the chamber before setting it down on the floor beside him. He turned on his side as I laid a blanket on top of him. At this point I was wide awake, and I couldn't help but ponder the night's events until the morning when I finally fell asleep on the recliner next to the couch. When I woke up my father had made a full breakfast for us and set up the dining table at which to eat. Hey there, you'd better hurry up before this gets cold, he said, smiling, as he set a plate of bacon on the table. I rubbed my eyes and gave him a questioning look. He seemed like a completely different person than the scared, shaking man from the night before. When I tried to bring it up he simply shrugged it off and said not to worry about it, that he just had a rough night. You know, son. I've been thinking, he said. It's about time that I showed you how to do all that other stuff around the farm that you've been asking about. You're a grown man now and it's time I pass my responsibilities on to you. Part of me was curious as to the odd timing of his revelation, but I couldn't help but be excited to learn the things that I had watched him do all of my life. We spent the next few days from dawn to dusk working in the field. He showed me how to operate the tractor, sent me on errands, and showed me everything I would need to know for the day that I would take over the farm. It was really nice to see my father this way again after all these years, but I still had an uneasy feeling in my stomach. A week later I would find out why. I started the day like any other and got dressed to begin my morning chores. I went downstairs and saw that my father was already gone. I assumed that he just had an earlier start than I did. I laced my boots up and then headed out to the barn where I expected to meet him. There was still no sign of him. Dad. I called out for him. Where are you? I glanced around the property back and forth looking for some kind of movement. Nothing. I decided to go ahead and walk down the old hunting trail that borders the forest. A few hundred feet down the path something caught my eye. My father's rifle was leaning against the old abandoned well from the very first homestead. 
My stomach dropped. He never left his rifle anywhere. Period. D, Dad? I said as I slowly walked towards the well. When I got close enough I could see that there was blood dripping from inside the roof of the well. My eyes began to water. No. I thought as I stepped even closer. Close enough to see a single bullet hole through the roof of the well. My knees grew weaker and I finally made it to the edge of the well. I peered inside. To this day I will never be able to unsee the mangled, contorted body of my father at the bottom of that well. I will always be cursed with the memory of those cold, dead, green eyes facing up and looking right through me. They were not his eyes, not anymore. I fell to the ground and began sobbing uncontrollably. I have never stopped blaming myself for not seeing how damaged he was. For not seeing why he chose that week to train me on all the things he had been putting off. It has weighed heavily on me for seven years now. After I called to report his death, I swore to myself that I would follow through on his last wish and take care of this farm. From that point forward I put all of my emotions into tilling, plowing, building, and general upkeep. Once the grief had subsided, I found it a lot easier to carry on. That was until a few days ago. I was doing my normal round of putting out fresh feed for the animals when I noticed something off to my left. All of the cattle were huddled together and acting very upset. I hopped the gate and made my way through the cattle to see what they were crowded around. What I found made me take a step back. One of my dairy cows was lying on its back with its stomach torn open. Three long gashes from its udders to its throat. It smelled horribly. I ran as fast as I could back to the gate and leaned against it as I threw up. I wiped my mouth and looked back at the rotting corpse. How the hell did I not hear this poor thing screaming? I thought. I held my elbow over my nose and mouth so I could get close enough to search around the cow. There didn't seem to be any sign of whatever it was trying to eat it which I found odd. A predator wouldn't leave its fresh kill untouched. Then I saw it. Damn, I said out loud to myself. Wolf paw prints. One single set of huge tracks. I followed the tracks leading away from its kill for about a hundred feet towards the forest tree line. It had rained the previous day so luckily the tracks were easy enough to make out. As I got closer to the line of trees I saw something that I couldn't make sense of. The set of four paw prints suddenly turned into only two prints with a long stride between them. I immediately stopped and I noticed my breathing become more rapid. I couldn't bring myself to go any further towards the dark woods. I didn't have to. I could see that about 10 feet from where the tracks changed they came to an abrupt stop. Right at the end of the trail there was a marking in the dirt that almost looked burned. The marking resembled a circle with a series of triangles in it. I had never seen anything like it before in my life. When I got back to the house I poured myself a tall glass of bourbon and sat down at the dining table. What kind of wolf stands up and walks on two feet? I asked myself. I called the local sheriff to let him know about my mauled cow and to let the other farmers in the area know to keep an eye on their livestock. He expressed his condolences and thanked me for calling it in. I spent the rest of the day cleaning the dead cow and storing the meat in my deep freezer. If there's one thing I learned by being the caretaker of a farm it's that you don't let anything go to waste. Luckily the cold of the winter kept the meat from spoiling. Later that night I was sitting on the couch reading through some of the old newspapers that my father would hoard. I always liked following in his footsteps wherever I could. I went through a stack of three or so until I came upon one with a captivating title. Midville farmers mourn the tragic loss of their two sons I just stared at the headline for a few moments. It occurred to me then that I had never actually read the article. As I read through the paragraphs detailing my mother's interview on the incident, one question stood out to me. Interviewer, were you able to see this wolf for yourself? Some rumors are saying that this wolf might be related to the town's folklore. Are you familiar with the legend of the Midville Dog Man? Helen, don't you even start with that. My daddy used to tell me those stories as a kid just to scare me away from getting lost in the woods. They're nothing but nonsense. Midville Dog Man? I thought. 
I wondered why I had never heard of it before if it's such a legend in this town. As it got late I started to doze off. The newspaper slipped out of my hands and fell to the floor. I decided it was time to turn in for the night. My eyes flew open and I shot up in my bed when I heard a loud bang coming from downstairs. I grabbed my father's rifle and paused to listen. The next sound that I heard was a deep and long scraping noise coming from the front porch. This was followed by a few evenly spaced thuds. Footsteps. I thought. I raised myself off of the bed, pointed the rifle in front of me, and carefully made my way down the steps. When I got to the bottom and turned the corner I could see a bright orange light shining through the windows on the front side of the house. I walked closer to the front door. I put my hand on the doorknob and opened the door. What I then saw in the field I don't think I will ever be able to fully explain. A few hundred feet in from the house there was a large glowing, oval shape. It hovered above the ground a few feet and its edges appeared to be on fire. Despite how far it was from me I could still see it shimmering. It was almost hypnotizing. My attention turned slightly to the right. However, when I saw a large silhouetted figure running on all fours towards this light, my mouth dropped. In my life I had never seen an animal this big in the area. Once it reached its destination it paused. The great beast elevated its head slightly and I could tell it was smelling the air. Then it cocked its head to the left and I could make out two red, glowing dots facing my direction. My eyes widened. I took a step back and aimed my rifle at it. I didn't notice it before but I was shaking uncontrollably. It was at this point that I heard an awful cracking noise coming from the direction of the beast. I watched in horror as the thing, in a jerky and unnatural way, stood up on its hind legs. My knees buckled beneath me and I collapsed backwards from fright. I used my feet and hands to back myself further back into the house. The beast slightly raised its arms and cocked its head back. It then let out the most spine-chilling roar I had ever heard. I could feel it vibrating in my chest. The fear within me was so overwhelming that tears started to flow down my face. Then the beast slowly backed itself towards the orange circle. As it got closer I almost thought I could see its hair catch on fire. Whenever it backed fully into the light there was a bright flash and the circle collapsed into itself. The night was dark again. Everything was so quiet that I could hear my blood pumping in my head. The beast had vanished. Still shaking, I forced myself to my feet. In all the confusion I didn't see what lay at the top of the steps on the front porch. I jumped back when I saw three decapitated cow heads facing the front door. There was a line of blood and fleshy chunks leading straight to the threshold. On the wooden door there were three deep and widespread claw marks that stretched from the top left corner to the bottom right. There was still blood dripping through the freshly made grooves. I sat on the couch with my rifle pointed at the front door until the sun came up this morning. Today, as I am writing this, my bags are packed and I am leaving my family home. I now understand what drove my father to commit such an unspeakable act. I can sense in my gut that the dismembered cows and marks on the door were warnings. I'm not welcome here anymore. No one is welcome anymore. I have no idea what that thing was or where it came from. I do know that it was not a wolf or anything remotely close to that. I could feel a higher sense of intelligence. Whether or not that dark beast came from another world or even hell itself, I'll never know. I think I will be happy to never know. I just pray that I am able to leave whatever it was behind me on this property. To any of those who find this letter that I am leaving on my dining table, please heed my warning and leave this place. It is not safe here. Especially at night. I'm still having a hard time processing what I saw a few nights ago. Anyway. About three nights ago, I saw something that I still can't fully understand or explain. First, a little background, I live in mid-Michigan in a small residential slash suburban town surrounded by cornfields, you know the type. However, I do live in the more populated area as my parents' house, where I currently reside, 
is located within walking distance of our downtown. Our street is by no means desolate, dark, or isolated, and most of the houses are fairly close to one another. A pretty urban setting given the town itself. Okay back to the other night. It was about 2.30 am and since it's pretty normal for me to be up that late, me and my dog have developed what I call our little routine. He comes to my door, lets out a huff to inform me that he's there, and then we go downstairs where I let him outside through the front door to go to the bathroom. After completing his business, he comes in and we share a share a midnight snack of ham straight from the fridge lol. Now keep in mind, my dog is extremely well trained and very old. He doesn't need a leash or a fence to keep him from running away, he always comes right back after he's done, he'll even wait at the door if you aren't there. So on this particular night, I open the door for him and I'm just about to turn and walk away so I can prepare our midnight snack, when I notice he's still standing on the porch staring across the street. This isn't completely out of the norm for him, but this was lasting a bit longer than usual. When he finally jumps off the porch I follow his line of sight where he had been staring and I see what looks like a large dog or maybe even a wolf, slinking across my neighbor's yard on the other side of the street. For the first few seconds I'm trying to figure out WTF this thing is, because it looks like it could be a dog but something isn't right. It's too long and the way it's moving isn't normal. And even though it was only about 50 feet away, it looked as though it were blurry. I can't think of any other way to describe it. None of it made sense. At this point I go into panic mode because so far this creature hasn't seemed to notice me or my dog, but if it does, my dog doesn't stand a chance. Like I said, he's old. And also a Pomeranian. Whatever this thing was, it would destroy him no doubt. I decide to slowly open the outer glass door hoping to create just enough noise to alert my dog that it's time to come in, but not enough for whatever that thing is to hear me too. Luckily, my dog notices right away and starts running back towards me. But at the same time, this dog creature starts turning toward me, slowly. It almost felt fake how unnatural it moved, like animatronics or something. I'm not even sure what I'm looking at, but I have this indescribable feeling that I'm not supposed to be seeing this. So, as this thing is turning to look at me, my dog is coming through the door simultaneously and for about one second, I take my eyes of the creature thing to look down at my dog and close the door. When I look back up, this thing has moved about 30 feet to the left into my neighbor's driveway rather than their yard, and is standing on its hind legs at around 7 to 8 feet tall, staring at me. Now I'm really freaking out, how did it move so quickly, and how did it not make a single sound? How is it so tall? I literally looked away for maybe a second. I look away again to lock the door and gather myself, only to look again and see absolutely nothing. It was gone. This whole ordeal only lasted maybe 20 to 30 seconds total. Shaking, I give my dog his ham and mine and I run downstairs to my brother's room in the basement to tell him what happened. Being a normal 19 years old playing video games, his response was wow WTF that's super weird. But honestly I just needed to tell someone, to confirm that what just happened actually happened and that I wouldn't wake up the next day and convince myself it was a dream. Over the last few days, I've told anyone who would listen about what I saw, including my parents. Those who are closer to me seemed a bit more unnerved, because like I mentioned earlier, I don't usually believe in this type of thing. They could tell I was shaken by whatever it was that I saw. Tonight, after some random googling as the result of my restless mind, I came across what appears to be the exact description of what I saw. The Dogman, which eventually led me to this threat. I've never heard anything about it before, but I am now fully convinced I saw one in front of my very own eyes, and it saw me too. Michigan Dogman I live in the Manistee National Forest near White Cloud, Michigan, and I'm an avid woodsman. Know almost every animal that lives on my property. So it was a normal day but I saw a gigantic wolf track and I thought nothing of it. 
because there are really big wolves here. But later that night after going to sleep there was a bang that shook the entire house. When I looked out the window I saw it, its eyes were blood red and it had massive teeth and claws. It was at least 10 to 15 feet tall but I wasn't scared but just dumbfounded at what I was seeing. And with another leap that shook the house it was gone and I went back to sleep. The Dogman of Bailey Creek, as told to me by my grandfather. I grew up in the small foothills of eastern Kentucky, where folklore and stories of haints and mountain monsters run rampant. Everyone has a cousin or uncle that saw Bigfoot while out hunting, or an aunt that swears she saw a ghost in the old high school that one time, so it's hard to discern what's truth and what's fiction. Most of what I've personally seen or heard while out in the mountains, I usually attribute to local wildlife. Have I seen anything that is unexplainable to my logical mind? Not yet, but I'm also not arrogant enough to think that these things don't exist. I saw someone on this subreddit earlier that said it perfectly, 90% of the stories are fiction, but it's the 10% that keeps you coming back. By logic, we have to assume that 10% of all the stories we see are true, and that those people witness something amazing and terrifying. In my small town, Dogman is a known perpetrator of many mis happenings. I've heard stories of it killing chickens, trying to bust down doors, attacking hikers, or just being a nuisance on someone's farm or property. I've also heard stories of it stalking those that live deep in the woods, coming to stare into their windows at night, and even protecting them from strangers that made their way onto their land at some point. The majority of these people like to tell booger stories as we say. They like having a grand story to tell people, for attention or just the pleasure of telling it, I'm not sure which. But a few are trustworthy, and they are usually the ones that will only tell their tale if asked. My grandfather was one of them. Yes, I know I sound biased because it's my grandfather, but I have six uncles and an aunt that literally could make a living out of the lies they tell about local cryptids and I'm more than happy to call them liars. My grandfather though, he was a very logical man. He was a skeptic in everything cryptid, as well as spirits and ghosts, always looking for the logical explanation, and usually pissing off the storyteller as well by questioning everything. That's why I tend to believe him, because he never tried to lie to me and his other grandkids. If anything, he was always the voice of reason we ran to when we were scared. But once, when I was younger, I asked him if he had ever seen anything before, be it ghost or monster. I had been hearing stories from my uncles all day about Bigfoot, Haints, etc., and wanted to know his thoughts on it. He sat there for a minute, not even acknowledging my question, and when I was about to ask again in case he hadn't heard me, he spoke. When he and my grandmother had first bought our family homestead, they had heard fantastical stories about monsters that roamed the part of the mountains and how evil they were. My grandmother was a little scared, but my grandfather said he just shook his head and went on. He figured it was few black bears that people had been hearing and seeing, or even some bobcats, and that he wasn't too worried about it. About two months into them living there, sure enough he had seen a mama bear and some cubs making their way up the mountain behind his house. So he didn't think too much when he heard something pounding on his front door one night, scratching at it and trying to get in. He told me that he grabbed his shotgun before going to the door. He tried to looking out the front windows to see if he could catch a glimpse of whatever or whoever was there, but he could only see a large black shadow being cast on the porch. Being the fearless soul that he was, the man fought in World War II, and was under General George S. Patton, so you can imagine what all he'd seen, he unlocked the door and swung it open, expecting a bear or even a person standing there. It was neither. What he saw that night still had him shook up when he told me this story, some odd 50 years later. He said that as the door swung open, he saw an extremely large humanoid standing there. It stood a good 6 feet 5 inches, and it was slightly hunched over as it stood on the covered porch. Its arms were long, the hands reaching well past its bent knees, which were bending in the opposite direction of a human's. 
He said that it was covered in thick black hair, very dense and dark, and that it had a smell to it that was a mix of a wet dog and raw sewage. Lastly, the face, or rather the head, was what brought him up short. He said it looked like a German shepherd's head had been placed on this large, hairy, human-shaped body, and that as he looked at it, it cocked its head sideways and looked back down at him, its eyes showing fear and confusion. He told me that he pulled his gun up, and before his finger could hit the trigger it took off, but not before he got off a warning shot, right in its right calf muscle. He said the howl that came out of it when he shot it scared him more than anything in his life had, and he ran back inside, bolting the door closed. He stood there, listening as its cries and howls began to fade as it ran deeper into the mountains, until he couldn't hear it anymore before he moved away from the door and went back to bed. And he swore to me on all things he holds dear that this thing would still show up sometimes, dragging its wounded leg across his porch as it came up to the door, but it never bothered anything again. He said it would come up to the door, sniff around it before growling softly and then taking off again. He told me that there are a lot of things in the woods that can hurt you, be it beast or plant, and a lot more that can scare you. But the thing he saw that night was the scariest of them all, and that I'd best never go looking for it, because I would woefully regret it if I came across it. My grandfather has been gone for about 15 years now, and I still believe every word he told me that day. Does that prove the existence of such a creature? Maybe not, and the words of an old war vet won't be enough to change the minds of some people, but to me it's the realest story I've heard about the creature. I hope that someday, someone can get some actual documented proof, if only to prove what my grandfather went through and what he saw that night. I feel it's just an obligation to say that I too am a skeptic. I've been trying to convince myself I didn't see a large, hairy, humanoid thing in in the woods all those years ago. But I did. This was somewhere around the mid-2000s when I was in middle school. I was staying at a friend's house for the night in the backwoods of Michigan. For privacy we'll say his name is Jay immediately behind Jay's house was a few acres of woods that led to a lake. If you went straight back into the woods from his backyard, there was a path that went straight to the lake, which was intersected at 90 degrees by another path about halfway to the lake. Probably a quarter mile from the backyard to the lake. If you went straight down the path from the backyard, then turned left at the intersection, the path was a downhill grade, followed by a flat portion, followed by an uphill grade, which eventually ran into a two-lane country road, one of those 55 miles per hour ones that goes on for miles with not so much one or two houses for miles. It was late in the afternoon, and the sun was just starting to set. We, being middle school boys, were running around the woods all afternoon playing with fake guns and stuff. Good times. Absolutely nothing leading up to this point was strange. No weird, eerie feelings. No odd, unidentified sounds. No paranoia or ghost stories prior to playing in the woods. Just two brothers running around having a great time outside. Well, we were basically pretending we were army guys. At one point, Jay decided to run off saying something about flanking the enemy. He dashes off to my left. I started creeping through the woods pretending to shoot down bad guys as I went. I found myself standing at the intersection described earlier. Straight forward was towards the lake. To the left was the path that went down, then back up to the road. I was standing looking diagonally between the two paths, when I hear some faint sound slightly off to my right, towards the lake. What I saw made my whole body tingle, in the worst possible way. About 50 feet, maybe more, maybe less, towards the lake and just behind a tree, I see this face and shoulder slash arm peeking around it. The most terrifying part was that it was probably two feet or more higher than you'd expect a human's head to be. Before I could properly observe the face, which was undoubtedly hairy, it snapped back behind the tree as if it realized I could see it. The color of the figure I saw was light gray, like your average cement sidewalk. Because of that I was unsure of what it was. 
My first couple thoughts were sheer confusion and fear. Then, in my frozen state, I remembered that Jay was wearing a shirt almost exactly that shade of gray. I tried whisper shouting his name towards the now hidden figure. I called out maybe two or three times went off about 50 feet behind me and to my left, down the path leading towards the road, Jay emerged from the thicker trees. This was the complete opposite direction from the figure I saw, and there's no way he could have snuck around me in that short of a time frame. To further drive the point home, it was fall, and the ground was covered in layers of dry, dead deciduous leaves. The crunch from the leaves was very distinct and you couldn't avoid it. Anyways, Jay had heard me call out, and from just down the slight decline, he looked up and asked what was going on. I pointed off into the trees where I had seen the figure and said at normal volume I saw something big over there. As soon as I finished that sentence, I mean the very second, whatever I had seen started stomping off towards the road, parallel to the path we were on but probably 50 to 100 feet deeper in the woods. Woods which were too thick to see anything at that distance. For some godforsaken reason, we tried to run after it. Jay and I were athletic. As athletic as 6th or 7th graders could be. We played tons of sports and were fast kids. We were hauling ass down the path parallel to the beast, as fast as we could sprint, and yet it was absolutely smoking us. The road, if I remember correctly, was a solid quarter mile from the intersection of the two paths. We had maybe just finished running down the downhill portion when this monster was already to the road. And believe it or not, we could tell where it was from the crunching leaves, and you could hear its massive footsteps clear as day, even while running. When we realized it was getting to the road, we also realized a car was coming. I kid you not, as soon as the crunching leaves stopped and the thing stepped out onto the road, the car slammed on its brakes and pounded on the horn. Its tires screeched fro a solid three to four seconds at least. When the car finally stopped we heard the leaves start crunching on the other side of the road, and then the car slammed on the gas, peeled out again and took off like a bat out of hell. Keep in mind we could only hear all of this. We didn't see the car so there's no way we could ever track the person down to ask what they saw, but I wouldn't be surprised if their story is out there on the internet somewhere. About the time they almost turned a Bigfoot into roadkill. Anyways, we finally made it to the road and crossed to the other side. On that side, it was mostly flat woods as far as the eye could see. Nothing but trees, trees, and more trees. No sight nor sound of the beast. We waited for a bit then went back home. A few things to note. Was it a Bigfoot for sure? I can't say. But what I do know is that it was tall, hairy, gray, and 100% bipedal. There was absolutely no mistaking the sound of it running. It's funny though. There's descriptions, videos, etc. of Bigfoot walking, and moving far faster than a normal human but I'm almost sure this thing was sprinting. The speed at which it reached the road was utterly unbelievable. It ran a quarter mile in probably close to 20 seconds. And trust me, I understand how absurd that is. Saw what looked like a gray Bigfoot peeking at me from behind a tree. It ran away at an insane speed and almost got hit by a car. There's something standing on two legs outside our tent. And it's not human. It's been over six years since this has happened, but I still wake up in a cold sweat every now and then. I started using Reddit about two months ago, and just now discovered this subreddit. I think this would be a good place to share my experience and ask if anybody knows what I encountered. I won't disclose where I went camping because I'm afraid it's still out there. I will say it's in the west region of America with some good forests. Anyway, let's get started. My girlfriend, now wife, and I were going through a tough time. Her father just died, and I had lost my license because of speeding. We needed something to take our minds off of everything. So we decided to go camping. We were both nature people. Deal with it. After about two weeks of planning, we found a good time and spot. In that two-week period, I managed to get my license back. 
So that was good. For this story, I won't give my girlfriend's real name for privacy reasons. So her name will be Elizabeth. We packed all the essentials we would need of a week out in the woods. Tents, clothing, first aid kit, flashlights, a lighter, food, a cooler, knives, a machete, $150 for an emergency, playing cards, a guitar, etc. Also, I brought a CZ USA 85 combat pistol just in case. Thank God I did. We packed all of our things into the car, and we were on our way. I'll spare you the four hour drive. We stopped at a Burger King about nine miles away from our destination to recharge our batteries and to stretch. Elizabeth pulled out her phone and looked at the weather only to see that it was going to rain for the entire week. Great. Now what are we going to do? She asked. I guess we should get to the campsite to set up the tents before it's too late. I suggested. We did just that. When we got to the campsite, it started to rain a bit. So we started to unpack as fast as we could. While we were unpacking, we noticed that this campsite was recently used, and the people who were previously there had no respect for nature. There was garbage everywhere. Every third step you would hit a can of beer or a plastic bag. And I think at one point I saw an unopened box of tampons. The wind started to pick up too. So all the trash began to fly around in random directions. When we finally got the tent set up and things inside, the rain really started to come down. We managed to secure the tent well, but the rain fly almost blew off. While Elizabeth remained inside to set up the cots, I went out with my poncho and a hammer to secure the rain fly. While pounding the stakes into the ground, I felt a cold wave of dread wash over me. I don't know why. I just felt uneasy. It was as if something was watching me over my shoulder and I didn't know. By now, it was getting pretty dark. If I had to guess, it was about 8 colon 45 ish. I finished securing the rain fly and was about to head inside when I heard a howl a distance away. I thought it might be wolves, but it sounded off. Like a cross between a scream from a human and a howl from a coyote. I got goosebumps. I headed inside and zipped the door shut. Elizabeth and I snuggled until we both fell asleep. For the next two days, nothing too eventful happened. But the third night is when it appeared. There was no rain that night either. As we were sleeping, I woke up to the same howl I had heard two days prior. But the thing that scared me the most, is that it was closer. I shook Elizabeth's shoulder to wake her up. She gave me a partial half-asleep stare. Babe, there's something out the eye was cut off by the howl again. But now, it was like 200 yards away. That was enough to wake her. She sat up with sweat pouring down her face and shirt. Why is I coming towards you us? Said Elizabeth with fear in her eyes. That's when it dawned on me. We left some food outside after making dinner. It was probably going for our food. We sat in the tent holding each other, shaking with fear in pitch black dark. All of a sudden, we hear the howl again, but it was deafening. It was at our campsite. We heard it walking around looking for the food. Well, it found it. We heard what sounded like muffled screaming and loud thumping as it devoured our rations. Elizabeth was hugging me tight and crying into my shoulder. I was frozen just staring into the direction of the noise. The thing kept making these noises and screaming for like three minutes. Until Elizabeth sobbed into me making some noise. The thing stopped eating. It knew we were there. I embraced Elizabeth and started to silently cry too. This thing actually started to walk towards us. I thought, if I'm going to die here, I won't go down without a fight. I felt around for two things. My flashlight and my gun. I found those two things in about two seconds. I turned on my flashlight and pointed it into the direction the thing was. What I saw, made me scream. I saw the silhouette of a creature the size of a full-grown German Shepherd, but way skinnier through my tent wall. But what scared me the most, is that IT stood up on its hind legs and began to touch the tent. I snapped out of it and took one shot at the thing. Bang! It let out the most haunting, 
blood curdling scream. I can't even describe it in words. I kid you not, it turned around and ran away on two legs. We stayed awake for the rest of the night, fearing it might come back. Luckily, it didn't. But we still heard its screams. At the crack of dawn, we grabbed all we could, jumped into my car and drove out of that area as fast as we could. There was no time to even dismantle the tent. We ended up staying in a hotel for the rest of the trip. That spare cash we brought was worth it. We ended up leaving half of our stuff in the woods, but we didn't care. During the whole car ride out of the area, Elizabeth was crying and hugging my arm. After we returned home, we moved one month later. Elizabeth ended up going to therapy for four months to recover. We now have a baby boy and are living far away from our old home in the woods. We actually have a fear of camping now. But we live in a city now. So there's no problem. If anybody, anybody knows what we saw, please let me know. And may God return the thing we saw back to its home, hell. My friend, who happens to be an environmentalist out in the Pine Barrens saw a dogman in Manchester County, New Jersey. He and his friends were going back camping out in the woods on this large pickup truck, and he was looking towards the wood line to make sure no deer were gonna jump into view. The truck was going about 40 miles per hour, and he noticed something was following them on this trail. He then told his friend to slow down a bit cause they saw something following them and before he could slow down the creature jumped in the middle of the path and then back into the woods and they all got a clear description of what it was. My friend said it was tall, about 7 to 9 feet tall, with the body of a bodybuilder and perked ears and a snout like a German shepherd. He also said that the appendages this animal had was human-like, but with large claws on the end of its hands and feet and a large bushy tail. He still tells this story to this day, and I believe every word of it, because number one I've talked to his friends who were with him and they all say the same thing. This story could be a creepypasta, but I'll narrate it because it's interesting. A dog man attacked my friend. Before I jump into this story, you, the reader, should know a few things. First, I am not claiming ownership of this story. This happened to my friend and his two cousins. My friend just decided to share this story with me. Second, what you're about to read is very scary. Don't say I didn't warn you. And lastly, I feel it is necessary to tell the story how my friend told it. I.e. from his point of view. Let's jump right in. A few weeks ago my uncle and my two cousins came out to visit my mom and dad for a barbecue. We have one every year on the 1st of May because it happens to be my mom and dad's anniversary. So it's the 1st of May and my uncle and my two cousins get out to my house. We had just moved into back in February so we were all excited to have our first get together out there. It was really nice. We were situated on a mountain top with a decently sized yard that was completely surrounded by woods. My dad had plans to clear out a few sections of the woods so that he could put deer feeders out so he could have the chance of getting some hunting in out there. While he hadn't started preparing to begin cutting trees down he decided to test the water as he phrased it and put about 8 or 9 trail cameras in to see if there were any deer worth hunting this year. I had helped him out in setting up the trail cameras, finding good spots and figuring out what position they should be facing. Then that was the end of that. So while my dad and uncle were hovering over the grill me and my two cousins had decided to relieve our boredom by playing around in the backyard. We had a trampoline set up, the original owners of the house had decided to include their pool in the deal along with a volleyball court they made on the far side of the pool bordering the woods. So me and my two cousins are enjoying ourselves on the trampoline without a care in the world. After a short while my dad and uncle came to us and announced that dinner was ready. So we all went inside and grabbed a plate and then back outside to our back deck and sat down and ate. Me and my dad were the first ones to finish eating. My dad looked to me and suggested that we should go out and check on the trail cameras. 
We had done this many times before, sometimes even checking three or four times a week just to see what was out there in the woods. However, this time would be a little different. Me and my dad are going around the property checking all the trail cameras. We got to the point to where we only hadn't checked one of them. But for some reason, we couldn't manage to even find it. After searching around for almost 10 minutes, we eventually found the exact tree it should have been on. I remember placing it on that specific tree, and it was one of those trees that once you saw it again after the first time, it was damn near impossible not to recognize it. So my dad came up to me and started looking around, questioning that I had put the trail camera on that specific tree. I told him several times that I was 100% positive that that was the tree I placed the trail camera on. So we start circling the tree, looking for any signs of the our missing trail camera. While we were shuffling around, trying to find it, I kicked something. Hard. I tripped over myself and looked down at my feet to see what had tripped me. And there it was. Well, what was left of it, the trail camera. My dad came over to me and he saw it just as clearly as I did. The trail camera was completely and utterly destroyed. Upon further examination of the trail camera, we learned that the heavy duty ratchet straps we had used to secure it around this large tree had been torn apart. Literally. It looked as though something had grabbed the trail camera and just ripped it completely off the tree and then just went to town on destroying it. My dad, thinking that whatever did this must have stepped into the range of which the trail camera could have taken a picture of it. He tried to open the trail camera but to no success. This trail camera, which was almost damn near indestructible, was damaged so badly to the point to where my dad couldn't even get it open. My dad not wanting to admit defeat, grabbed his knife and exclaimed that he was getting that damn thing open to at least get the memory card, that was all he seemed to care about at that moment. So after a few minutes of forcing his knife into the trail camera he finally managed to get it open. It took him a second to fully realize where the spot for the memory chip was supposed to be in the tangled mess inside the trail camera. When he finally found the spot for the memory card, he pulled it out and to his utter disbelief, the card had broken into several different pieces while inside the trail camera. My dad was beyond pissed at that point, because not only did he lose a $150 trail camera, he also lost his only chance of figuring out what did this. Now even more pissed than before he said to let's go back to the house. He picked up the trail camera and we both heading back to the house. He told the others what had happened to the trail camera and then showed them. Fast forward to that night. My dad, my uncle, me, and my two cousins all went out into the woods. Just practically clinging to hope that one of the other trail cameras had spotted the thing that destroyed one of our cameras since me and my dad had checked them. My uncle went with my dad so me and my two cousins were together. So we begin checking every single trail camera we had left. So my cousins and I are heading towards the location of our third camera to just retrieve the memory card, because my dad had told all of us to just grab the memory card and he will search all of them together. We get about 15 yards away from our third camera and in an instant, a chill ran from the top of my head, all the way down to both my feet. I told my two cousins about this and they said we know. We feel it too. We all started panning looking to see if we could see anything at all. Then I picked up on something. In the direction we were heading to get to the camera I saw a figure. Me thinking it was either my dad or my uncle I called out to it by saying hello. Then it looked right at me and my cousins. I knew immediately that it was neither my dad or my uncle, because it had glowing red eyes. At first glance I thought maybe it was an animal like a deer thinking that it was just reflecting the lights of our flashlights back onto us. But that theory went straight through the window when we turned our flashlights away from it and then it stood up. I watched, in utter horror and disbelief as it stood up very slowly, from about the level a deer would be, to being about 9 feet off the ground. As me and my cousins were standing there in shock, it let out a deep guttural growl and started advancing towards us. 
I was the first to snap out of the sort of trance I was in and grabbed both of my cousins to try and get them to move so we could run. One of my cousins managed to get out of the trance as well and we both tried to get the other out of it as well. My other cousin finally showed a sign that he was out of the trance and just before I could utter the words to run as fast as we could, this thing leapt into the air and landed out top of the cousin that took longest to snap out of it. Myself and my other cousin fell to the ground as the creature landed then it let out a loud growl before getting off my cousin and grabbing him by his throat. It lifted him up off the ground and roared directly into his face before looking at my other cousin the one who was just getting back to his feet. The creature threw the first cousin away from it and then hit the other cousin across the face, causing him to go right back down to the ground. Then it looked directly at me. It took one gigantic step forward and lifted me off the ground as well. Then did the same roar it did to my cousin. Only much louder. I yelled for my cousins to run if they could. One cousin was helping his brother get back to his feet after being thrown and they looked at each other, then to the creature and decided there was only one thing to do. In desperation they each picked up a fallen tree branch from the ground and charged at the creature. One of my cousins connected a swing to its head while the other went directly for the arm the creature had me in. The force of the blow to the creature's head caused it to falter, while the multiple hits to its arm caused it to drop me. My cousins tried to get a few more swings into but the creature managed to right itself and caught both incoming blows going directly for its head. It grabbed both of my cousins, one in each hand, then threw them away from it, causing my cousins my cousins to drop the branches they were using as weapons to fall back to the ground. All three of us got together and tried to run, but the creature swung one of its arms and connected to all three of our chests, causing us to fall down again. The creature reared back its head and let out the most terrifying roar I have ever heard then started to move towards us. Just then, a gunshot rang out, then another, and another. All three shots connected to the creature. I looked up just in time to see the creature fall to the ground, appearing to be lifeless. I look over my shoulder to see my dad and uncle, both standing there as white as sheets, both holding a gun in their hands. They both hurried over to me and my cousins and told us to run back to the house immediately, fearing the creature may not be dead. Both of my cousins booked it back to the house, whereas I did not. I wanted revenge. I wanted it dead. For good. I jerked the gun out of my uncle's hands and proceeded to empty the rest of the clip into this thing's chest. Once I was sure it was dead I hit it across the face with the shoulder stock of the gun and spat in its face and screamed how you like that. I handed my uncle back the gun which he immediately loaded another mag into it. I walked past my dad and started heading back towards the house with my uncle and dad following close behind me. We get to the edge of the woods and start making our way across the small field to get to the house. Then, out of nowhere. We heard several more growls, and roars sounding almost exactly like the creature we just killed. Hearing this, then immediately my dad screamed at us to run. So we did. All three of us started to book it to the house as fast as we could. We hopped the about four foot tall chain link fence that made up the dimensions of our front yard and then ran up the stairs up onto the front porch. My dad and my uncle both turned and started firing their guns. Not at anything almost like they were trying to scare the creatures off. That was, until one of them showed itself, then both my uncle and my dad shot it at the same time. It fell to the ground lifeless and then, everything went silent. No more growls or roars were being heard, nothing at all. Everything just went completely silent. All three of us made it back inside the house. And then that entire night, Everyone in the house that knew how to operate a gun safely had one, in the hands or on their person. It stayed that way until the next morning. Then the next morning came around. Against everything that was screaming in the back of our minds. Me, my cousins, my uncle and my dad went out back into the woods. We were trying to see if we could find the bodies of the two creatures we had killed. To our disappointment, we found nothing. Except of course, the blood of the creature I myself had dumped the rest of a mag into. That was all we found. 
Just that one pool of blood. Phew. Boy was that scary guys and girls. I tell you, it was scary to listen to nonetheless on top of having to take notes on that story as my friend was telling it. I wasn't the only one who was scared. It also disturbed my friend a little bit as he tried to recall all the events from that night that almost completely changed his life. My friend said it changed him a whole lot when it came to how he felt about going outside. Let alone at night time. For those who are curious. My friend still lives at that house. Although he is still scared that anything like that could happen again, he has had no experiences even close to that night since. In fact he hasn't even seen or heard these creatures since that night. Anyways that's all for this story. I hope you guys and girls did thoroughly enjoy this despite how scary it was. If you did, consider upvoting this post, and my friend has also requested that if you have any comments about his story to go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. He wishes to know more about these things and to have other people's thoughts about his encounter. Thank you for reading. I moved to Michigan in the winter from Florida to a small town called Mio. That spring I was walking in a short patch of woods I was looking down following a deer track. I stopped as I came upon a very large dog print came out of the woods and followed the deer track. Now I have seen wolf, bear, and cougar tracks this dog track dwarfed a bear track. I know people will think it crazy but I didn't see any forepaw prints just rear paws. I felt like I was being watched the hairs on my neck and arms stood up. I looked around and didn't see anything or anyone so I ran back home. I remember an elder of the tribe told me of skinwalkers and dogmen growing up. Now I believe. My encounter. This happened a couple years ago. At the time I was 17 and me and three of my friends had been up to a cabin in North Carolina. In the mountains we were celebrating the end of junior year of high school. It was just us four first night. We got there we heard some noises from outside the cabin at about 1.30 in the morning. I did not want to look outside to see what it was. My friend did said they couldn't see anything so I looked out. Couldn't see anything. Next morning we went outside and saw some footprints outside. Footprints like I've never seen before and I hope to never see again. Fast forward to the night. Quay decide to go outside and have a campfire where 17 18 year old kids joking around laughing, having fun enjoying the summer. When we hear a growl from the woods and the shrubbery and smaller plants around us start moving like they're in the wind. Even though there's no wind I look behind me and I see two amber eyes staring. I turn to my friend to ask if he's seen it too he looks at me, pale in the face, and asks me what the hell is that thing. I don't know what it is all I know is it's massive and I don't want to find out. So we run inside the cabin and tell the other people that were there what we saw. They don't believe us so they look outside and it's standing there about nine and a half feet tall grayish black hair very muscular with these massive claws and huge fangs. So they ran inside shut the door and we closed the blinds and tried to forget about a thing. Later that night I went up to bed I looked outside my window and it was out there staring directly at me. Needless to say I didn't get any sleep that night. The next day we packed up and left. Not wanting to spend it on a night in those woods. This is the first time I've told anybody about this because I didn't think anybody would believe what I saw. To this day the image of that creature staring into my eyes from my bedroom window still haunts me. Got tapped when I was camping in ADK. I was camping in the Adirondacks by Lake George in NY. In the middle of the night I heard quiet heavy footsteps. I was mad because I was wondering who would walk so late at night in the middle of the woods. When I go camping I don't want to see any other people if possible. The footsteps were soft and heavy if that makes sense and you could tell it had two legs. Luckily I was too tired to freak out or care. Then my foot got tapped by the tent wall. I whispered to my friend but knew that was a waste of time. In my mind I said we are leaving in the morning. We mean no harm. 
I decided to let it go and not worry about it. I was too tired. It wasn't until the morning that I started to think about the whole thing. What stood out was the footsteps and the steady pace like it knew where it was going. Also the tap felt intelligent. Like it was saying hi. But I wouldn't trust that nor would I ever go looking for them in the woods. I know raccoons can tap and maybe deer but I know what I heard and felt. It was either a person in the middle of the night tapping on a tent or a Bigfoot or a Dogman or a Mothman or a Jersey Devil. This next story could also be creepypasta. When I first heard about Dogman, I sneered at the idea, so I understand the incredulity. It sounds insane to think something like this could exist. However, as I heard many stories I thought sounded pretty credible on DME radio, I started to open my mind to the possibility of cryptids. The wilderness, after all, is extremely vast. This idea was reinforced when I was watching some nature channel, and discovered that the largest living redwood tree was just discovered a decade ago in Northern California. I thought to myself if an enormous static tree can remain undiscovered for several hundred years, certainly a mobile intelligent being could be extremely evasive. Fast forward a couple of years into my newfound fascination, one day I ran into a friend of mine, and we started chatting. She said that she was going through tough times and she was living in a tent with her boyfriend and dog by the Rogue River in Southern Oregon. She told me of strange events they were experiencing at night while sleeping in their tent. Something was coming into close proximity to their tent, making grunting and snorting sounds, and occasionally a terrifying screaming sound that she could best describe as a woman wailing in distress. Even on the occasion that they weren't hearing anything distinct, their large cane corso dog would take notice a twig snap or unremarkable noise, whimper, and then belly crawl onto them, and proceed to whimper and shake in terror. While all this activity was mystifying to them, to me it sounded suspiciously similar to other events I've heard about. I made arrangements to go out to this property they were staying on, right along the Rogue River to see if I saw any strange happenings. The first night there was nothing notable. However, I did speak with one of people staying on the property, in a dwelling closer to the front of the property's house. I asked him if he had seen anything strange on the property, and he told me that one night he had heard some kind of violent altercation occur near the river. The next day he went down to the river's edge and on its muddy shores looked like two being scrapped it out, the ground was tore up, and it led into the river itself leading him to believe something had killed something else and dragged it into the river. I asked him if he had any idea of what was fighting, and he had no idea, but he did mention his belief in a humanoid type being that crawled on all fours, long-limbed, gray skin, and moved extremely fast because the long length of its slender limbs. And, for whatever reason he didn't elaborate on, believe they came out of the trees, and would slither down them sat night. Okay. Weird. I'm pretty certain this guy was rolling the meth pipe pretty hard. But I couldn't help but notice how closely his description of this thing of his was like so-called rake. And, if you've heard dogmen encounters, there does seem to be some component to this story where dogmen hunt this being. Why? The second night I was perched on the second story deck of the house, facing the river. The friend that brought me to the property along with her boyfriend had left for the night. I didn't mind hanging out on the deck as it was a warm summer night, and occasionally I would hang out with the house tenants, and come back out to observe. The rear portion of this property is about a half acre, long and narrow in its area. To the right is an empty house, and even further to the right is an old lodge or retreat from the 50s that has long been abandoned and become decrepit. To the left sat wrecking yard separated by a ten hedgerow then ran the entirety of the property down to the river. As I sat there on the deck chain smoking, I had this internal dialogue with myself in it, asking it to reveal itself to me, projecting the thought of I come in peace and please don't kill me. As I sat on the deck smoking and reading, I heard twigs snap and gentle rustling in the hedgerow, closer to the river. I stood up, gazing down at a sapling position closely to the hedgerow, and watched as a large silhouette appeared, 
out of nothingness, somehow traversing a wall of nearly impenetrable hedgerow without causing a cacophony, save a snapping twig and the rustling of a few leaves, or somehow scaling down from a massive tree that sat along the river's edge. And while I could distinctly see this thing's silhouette, I was unable to make out distinctive features as it stayed just out of the illumination of the deck's nightlight. Although, I didn't need to see it distinctly to know what it was, as the its inner lit amber eyes were a telltale clue. No natural animal has eyes like this, its eyes are not highly reflective like a cat's they are literally creating light, glowing in amber color. Its eyes were separated by about 7 inches to 8 inches and it stood about 7 feet tall. Simultaneously, as this entity stepped forward to make itself known, I saw at least at least a few sets of self-lit amber eyes peering through the hedgerow in my direction. I had prepared mentally for this moment, that's why I was there. I was scared, who wouldn't be, but my curiosity outweighed my self-preservation at that time. The feeling I had gazing down on this being can only be described as an adrenaline dump. It didn't show any aggression, it basically did what I had hoped for, it came forward and presented itself. I stood there and stared at it for what seemed like 10 minutes, but in reality was about 30 seconds, before I internally projected respect and gratuity for the encounter, and turned to walk into the house. There is a second portion to this account where at a later time, I came back to this property and saw something else emerge from under the water in the river onto the river's bank. But, this account has gotten way longer than I intended. Anyway, the whole point of this thread was not really supposed to be an encounter story, but rather, a query into what other people think these beings are, and why we are hearing about more encounters in greater frequency these days. My personal opinion is that these beings are interdimensional, capable of crossing the lower fourth to the upper third dimension via portals. That probably sound wacky to some but I've been pursuing this topic for a while, and through highly correlated synchronicities, and clues, that just come to me randomly for the last several years, I have come to this conclusion. I feel that the earth is in a very remarkable point in time, having much to do with spiritual development and transcendence. The world is going to be thrown into chaos like we haven't seen since the last great cycle, and this dimensional crossing is part of the growing pains. Back in August or September my boyfriend and I were outside in my backyard and out of nowhere we heard very loud panting. It sounded like it was coming from the left side of us but it felt like we were surrounded by it. It was like a huge dog panting directly and my left ear also sort of vibrating all around us. Whatever it was we couldn't see it because it was behind some bushes. I screamed really loud because I've heard of dogmen through others' experiences and that's what I thought it was. The thing continued to pant after I screamed so it wasn't scared off or phased at all by it. A few weeks before that my BF heard something that sounded like a shovel dragging on concrete. That is another noise people hear when these dogmen are around. Any thoughts of what it was or any similar experiences? Please share. I was working late into the wee hours of the morning when I decided to take a break to catch a smoke and take my dog out. Once we got outside and downstairs to the small grassy area next to my apartment building, I let my dog off the leash and popped a squat on the stairs and watched as she did her doggy stuff. By the time my cigarette was halfway finished, she had already taken a long leak and was now starting to make big sweeping circles looking for a place to park her poop. Knowing it would probably be a couple more minutes until she found her ideal spot, I just kept on smoking while I counted her laps, it was 10 at that point. As she does with her weird little poop ritual, she'll make one big final circle outside of the area she has been stomping around in before zeroing in. As I watched her start to make her final sweep, she stopped dead in her tracks about 20 feet in front of one of the trees that spot the landscape in front of my apartment complex. I was about another 30 or so feet behind her location, but I could see from where I was sitting, that her hackles had come out and her body was completely rigid. Knowing my dog like I did, she was about 20 seconds away from losing her and waking up half the neighborhood with her angry bark. 
I put my smoke out and started walking her way and softly calling her name. Usually this is enough to break her focus and get her to calm down, but that night, she was onto something. As I started getting closer to her, I noticed a change in my ever-present tinnitus. It had changed in pitch and become a lot louder. Louder than I remember it being in a long time. Another few steps, and I start to feel a weird sensation behind my left eyeball. It was not an unfamiliar feeling, but like the level of the tinnitus, I had not felt it for some time. I took another few steps where I come up on my dog and gently pet her back. As I did that, a piercing pain shot through the left side of my head. Once again, it was not an unfamiliar feeling, but it was not something I had experienced in some time. Nor did I want to. It was the telltale sign that within the next 90 seconds, I was going to start my first vertigo attack attack in nearly 11 years. I started to talk to my dog in a more stern tone to try and break whatever trance she was in, but she ignored me and continued to focus on the tree in front of us, only now she was letting out a deep guttural growl unlike anything I had ever heard from her before or since. Like clockwork, the pain behind my left eye and left side of my head abruptly ended, and I was hit with a wave of heavy vertigo. I hooked on my dog's leash and stood up. When I did, the vertigo gave off the sensation that my brain had detached from the base of my spine and was doing freeform back flips in my skull. I had to fight to stay upright, and keep my eyes from rolling back so I had enough perceived balance to make it back upstairs. To do this, I focused on the tree that my dog had been so upset about. And that's when it decided to step out from behind the tree and into our view. What it was remains to be seen, but I can tell you that it was tall. Taller than me, and I stand at 6 feet 7 inches. It was skinny too. Like unimaginably skinny. So skinny in fact, that you wouldn't believe organs could fit inside its torso. Along with its odd stature, the thing's skin was this deep pitch black. Due to the color, and the weird way it played with the poor lighting, it was impossible to make out any disenable facial or body features. From that impression alone, the only description I can muster up is that it looked like a poorly drawn 2D stickman that busted off the page. My dog was dead silent at this point, but she was shaking. We didn't dare move though, so I just stared at this thing as it looked back at us from maybe 6 feet in front of us. A few seconds more, and then the thing turned around and took off down the street away from us running at an astounding speed. It moved oddly though. Like it was gliding rather than running. Almost what a cross-country skier might look like, but even smoother and completely silent. It covered half a block in a matter of seconds before jumping over a six-foot fence in a single leap and vanishing into the night. A second after it vanished, my vertigo stopped, the tinnitus went down, and I was fine again. Well, mostly fine. I ended up doubling over and puking before walking my dog back. I don't know if my sudden vertigo attack was related to what I saw that night, but it certainly feels that way. Vertigo attacks that are associated with Meniere's tend to last an hour at their shortest and 24 hours at their longest. My attacks always averaged in the 12 to 16 hour range. This attack lasted less than two minutes. Yesterday I spent the night at a friend's house. I will call them Sam and Bob for privacy reasons, everyone else's name will also be changed. It was Sam, Bob, Jeff, and us Sam and Bob are brothers. Anyways, Jeff and I had came over and brought our dirt bikes. So naturally we spent the day riding, we had also ran to a store and picked up some fireworks to let off that night. We had quit riding at around 7, Keep in mind this is Eastern Kentucky, in the middle of the woods and farmland, because Sam and Bob's family are loaded with money, since we had finished riding, and it was getting pretty dark. We decided to light some fireworks. We had been lighting some smaller firecrackers and fountains and whatnot. But, Jeff had the idea to have a Roman candle war. In the middle of the war, when we were grabbing new candles, we heard a whoosh, which ended up being a used Roman candle firing a shot in the grass, but we didn't know that immediately, and Sam made the comment, 
that it was probably a Wendigo. Unto which Bob and Sam get in a huge argument about if Wendigos live in Kentucky or not. This blew up and ended with resolving it with a pillow fight on a trampoline. After we were all gassed out, I decided we should spend all night on the trampoline. At around, 9 or 10-ish, Jeff and I spotted some coyotes at a tree line across the road from us. We all went inside because I freaked out because I'm from a city and don't like wild animals. Also it stunk really bad. It smelled like dead rabbit or deer, probably the coyotes got something, so we all go inside but leave the pillows and blankets on the trampoline. After about an hour inside Sam tells us we forgot the bedding on the trampoline, and he wanted me and Jeff to go get it. I being terrified of the dark, begged Jeff to come with me. He agrees and we throw our socks and shoes on, and head out the back door onto the patio slash porch. We go down the stairs and towards the trampoline. I am behind Jeff grabbing the back of his shirt and he has a flashlight pointing straight. I'm looking to the right towards past the road looking for the coyotes. But I hear a thud sound to our left. I look over there and there is a line of four trees parallel with us. They are shaped in a V starting at the base. I don't see anything but I tell Jeff to point the flashlight over there and we don't see anything. So he swings it straight and keeps walking. I hear the thud this time but this time Jeff also hears it, it is much 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 louder, it's still to our left. Jeff swings the flashlight in between the second and third tree in the row and it's walking straight with us, not at us, but towards the same direction we were going. As soon as the flashlight lands on it, it's behind the third tree now and it stands up in the middle of the V of the tree, it stood about 4 or 5 heads taller than me and in 5 feet 9 inches. It was incredibly skinny as in I could see its ribs through its skin, which was a bright white, like not fluorescent white, but when the flashlight hit it, it definitely had a glow. Its eyes were the scariest part two big reflective orbs that were dark gray slash blackish but here's the catch they were reflective in a sense, like the eyes illuminated the flashlight back at us. Also his hands were gigantic its fingers wrapped around the tree trucks and there were super long, Jeff looks over and I scream and he just stands still I turn around and he is still standing but he dropped the flashlight. I still have his shirt in my hand and I yank him hard and he just takes off in front of me, I sprint past him up the back porch stairs, he falls on the stairs and I run to the door and open it and wait for him as soon as he runs through I slam it shut and lock the deadbolt and shut the curtains and jump back onto their couch. An interesting history about the Wendigo which is what today we call the rake or crawler. A dangerous flesh-eating evil spirit possessing and distorting a human body. This is from an Algonquin tribe, the same group of tribes where the Jesuits learned about the Wendigo. Today these demons are coming back out of the old tales into modern culture, as their numbers increase. Jack Fiddler was an Ogama, chief and shaman, of the Sukkurdudem among the Anishinaabe in what is now northwestern Ontario. His arrest in 1906 for the alleged murder of a Wendigo and his suicide before trial marked the beginning of the imposition of Canadian law on the Sucker people. Until then, Fiddler's people had been among the last Aboriginal peoples living in North America completely under their own law and custom like his father before him, Jack Fiddler became a famous shaman for his alleged ability to conjure animals and protect his people from spells. Most importantly to the people of the region, he could allegedly successfully defeat the Wendigo, a cannibalistic spirit that would possess people during all too frequent bouts of famine and disease. In his life, Jack Fiddler claimed to have defeated 14 Wendigos. Apparently some were sent against his people by enemy shamans, and others were members of his own band who were taken with an insatiable, incurable desire to eat human flesh. In the latter case, Fiddler was usually asked by family members to kill a very sick loved one before they turned Wendigo. In some cases, the Wendigo him or herself would ask to be euthanized according to the necessary rites. Fiddler's own brother, Peter Flett, was killed after turning Wendigo when the food ran out on a trading expedition. 
HBC traders and Cree and missionaries were well aware of the Wendigo legend, though they often explained it as mental illness or superstition. Regardless, several incidents of people turning Wendigo and eating human flesh are documented in the records of the company. Jack Fiddler's reputation also grew among these groups, and he was approached multiple times by Cree ministers at Island Lake and asked to bring Christianity to his people. Though he respectfully heard their requests, Fiddler did not convert. By the beginning of the 20th century, the Sucker people were among the only indigenous people in North America living in a traditional manner with almost no government imposition on legal and religious matters. Someone said it could be a crawler. This is a little long so I apologize. So I was probably around 9 to 10, and my family was moving back to our hometown area from El Paso where my dad was stationed on a base there. Our realtor, M, was showing us houses. So we pull up to this house, and it's overgrown with bushes and ugly crabgrass, the sidewalk is uneven and jagged, and even missing in some places. The white siding is pretty much brown by this point, with tree branches overhanging almost every inch of the roof so all you can see is this cave-like entrance into the front door. M informs us oh yeah it's been on the market for years, and there is no electricity so we will be seeing it in the dark we go inside and the sight that hits us is, remarkably depressing. There is broken picture frames and glass all over the floor, red splotches of some sort of powder are covering everything, a very very large chest is in the center of the living room about 5 feet in from the front door and there is the room's one single intact photo frame, with a half ripped picture of a family inside of it, a boy and his mom, sitting on top of it in almost perfect condition except one crack in the glass. The house smells like, something. Something old and wet, yet fresh and rotting at the same time. No one noticed the smell but me. We leave the living room and all I remember next is going to look into the garage. Now y'all remember when M told us there was no electricity and we would be seeing the house in the dark. The singular light bulb in the garage was glowing blue, not a bright iridescent blue by any means but a sickly, dim blue that was just bright enough to illuminate the walls and floor and bathe the garage in the same shade of blue it was radiating. My parents and M both made a comment how that was weird, and maybe there was some sort of charge going to the light through the power lines and whatever whatever whatever, I couldn't care less because what I was staring at was worse than any creepy light that was working when it shouldn't have been. There was something inside the garage, it looked like a human, or maybe what used to be a human, but it appeared, wet. Its skin kind of looked like if you grabbed it it would just slip right off. I could see veins through the skin, which was so pale it seemed almost see-through. This thing was emaciated, I could see all its ribs, I could see hip bones, its arms and legs consisted of just enough fat in the thighs and upper arms that you could tell that's what they were and not just sticks slapped on a lump of flesh. The neck was just long enough to appear proportionately weird, and the head was turned to look straight at me. If you could even say it was looking because where normal eyes would be there were just holes. There were stringy clumps of hair hanging from the tops and sides of its head. And I got the sick sense that it was happy to see me, almost as if it was thinking finally I could tell if it stood up, it would be tall. Almost ceiling height. So about 8 feet. I watched this thing crawl on all fours, think hands, and very long feet, not hands and knees, from the center of the garage directly under the light bulb, cross in front of me and my family and Ammon disappear into the wall. It kept its head turned on me the whole time. And I followed it with my eyes the whole time. I don't remember even feeling scared in the traditional sense. Like oh man I just saw a scary naked humanoid thing crawl across the floor in front of my eyes I felt invited, I felt intrigued, and more than anything I felt like it had been waiting on me just me. I felt like it was telling me come in, make yourself at home, you're welcome here my parents decided they were thoroughly creeped out though and without seeing the rest of the house, we left. They told him they weren't interested and that was that. We fired her shortly after because she made a habit of showing us abandoned houses in the pitch dark. 
I was the only person who saw the thing but my parents after thinking I was asleep in the car on the way home started talking about how once they opened the garage door they felt like they were trespassing, like someone was watching them, it felt colder all of a sudden than the rest of the house, it smelled like rotted meat, and something just wasn't right about that blue light. My personal experience with crawlers, or something like those? Hey everyone! As you read from the title, I want to tell y'all my personal experience with crawlers. Before we start, I want to specify that I live in Italy, so if what I saw is true, well I think that you should change the description from all throughout America to all throughout the world. Now, let's start. So, I'm a small YouTuber and when I record my videos, I usually lock me in the recording studio and I start to record. Well, every time I do that, I feel like I'm being watched from behind, like someone is in the attic. But it isn't only that. It has all started in April of 2020, when one night I had a very bad dream, well, when I woke up, instead of trying to sleep again, I started to make loud screams of terror, I couldn't stop, and I even injured myself trying to run away, while screaming, in a very strange state, like I couldn't control myself. That night, it was like 4 or 5 am, I didn't sleep, and for the entire day, I felt watched everywhere, from the kitchen, to the bathroom, to the bedroom again. The following night, I saw something, an all-black creature peeking out from a corner of my bedroom. But this time, I just tried to sleep again, and I did it. Nowadays, yep, like April of 2020 was 20 years ago, I sometimes do bad dreams, even about these kinds of creatures, but I always sleep again. I seldom scream. But I feel watched sometimes, like something is in the attic. So, now I want to let you decide, what happened that night? Did the creature I dreamt, probably, a crawler, like, one out of my dream? Also, if this post gets a lot of attention, I'll make a video on YouTube where I'll explore my attic to see if there's something. I just recently started talking about my only experience ever with something strange and unexplained. I really don't like to talk about it because it makes me sound crazy. I have only ever told my dad, GF at the time, a co-worker, and my best friend. Back in high school probably 17-ish I'm now 27, I would make regular late night trips back from my girlfriend's house. Traveled the road to and from her house about 100 times easily. One night I headed home and on this curve my headlight shined into the ditch. I only saw it for a second but immediately I began crying like I didn't have control over my emotions. What I saw in that split second was a long-bodied white-skinned creature bigger than any person, crawling in the ditch. It reminded me of a hairless cat. The head though was the shape of a person's head but no facial features except a large black mouth. Also its legs were backwards, like a person doing the crab walk. Anyways I was terrified to go back but I did at the daytime. The only thing in that ditch was a fallen tree. After I got over the fear of it, I drove that road probably 100 more times and never saw anything like that again. I thought it may have been the fallen tree playing tricks with the light but I don't think so because I tried to make myself see it again out of that tree, I couldn't. I just heard a creepy story from a coworker today. I believe him because, as he was telling his story, the hairs on his arms began to stand up. He described a sighting late one night in northern Wisconsin, in the winter, about 10 years ago. He was sneaking a cigarette at the back door of the place he was staying. Everyone was asleep. They were relatives of his that didn't smoke and forbade it in the cabin. As he was looking at the pines in the back of the property, through the cracked open door, he saw something moving through the trees. The moon was out and there was lots of light. Plus the reflection off of the snow brightened everything up. Anyway, he described a thing. White in color. Very tall. 12 to 15 feet. Thin body, arms and legs. The head was roundish with dark slash black spots where the eyes should be. He said it didn't seem to have joints, 
but rather snaked its way easily in and out of the trees walking kinda sideways. I don't remember what he did with his cigarette, but he said he quietly shut and locked the door, praying it didn't see him. Now I've spent a lot of time in the woods. Summer camps, scout camp, hunting, hiking etc., but I have never seen or heard anything like this. It really has me fascinated to think there are things like this in my area. Husband saw a crawler years ago, still stalking? So a few years ago, my husband was driving home and it was around probably 10 and he saw something on the side of the road crouched down over a deer, presumably eating it. He stopped the car to shine his headlights at it and see what it was and it bolted towards the car, hit it, and my husband took off. He said it was gray, skinny, and had long claw-like fingers. He said it looked exactly like some of the videos I've shown him from this thread. Recently, he heard a weird screeching noise followed by a bubbling slash gurgling outside that kept repeating at night and immediately went to investigate until he decided it was really freaky and came inside. Weird things keep happening, things go missing here, stray cats have gone missing, we live on a cul-de-sac beside a huge empty field with woods, we've had endless bad luck lately like beyond what could be deemed coincidental. I'm wondering if this could all be related. If so, we'd like to know what we can do. I think I encountered a rake or skinwalker. This was in July I can't remember what day but it was in July 2019. I used to live in California. I was outside skating and heard noises coming from the back of my shed. I checked to see what it is the first thing that came to mind was the neighbor cats but it wasn't that it was a tall skinny pale looking thing it looked human but it was pale it had no private parts completely naked and nothing just flat and pale with no hair it looked at me and I just kept looking at it. It was either eating something or looking down at something. None of my pets were outside they're all indoor animals and my backyard is pretty big. It looked at me with grey eyes and has its arms like a T-Rex kinda I was super freaked out and didn't yell at all just quickly sprinted back to my house and locked the door. I told my older brother what I saw and said I was just tired. I wasn't at all it was 11pm and I'm never tired. I also have good health and don't think I was just hallucinating. I also don't think it was just a tree since there was pretty good light to see what the creature was. I also have nothing for it to be standing on to make it appear tall so it has to be either a rake or a skinwalker. I saw one. Two years ago. I can't explain it, but I got this feeling like I wanted to visit the cemetery. I felt it had to be that day, that place. My BF came over. I told him and he tried talking me out of it saying he had bad feeling but ultimately decided he would drive me if I was really set on going, which I was. By the time we got there the sky had grown dark, started to rain, and the wind had a biting chill to it. I was set on my mission, though, and got out of the car which my BF refused to leave. I felt odd, nervous and calm at the same time. There was a charge in the air from the rising storm. The gravestones lit up from the headlights and the full moon between the clouds. Walking toward where my family is buried I had a sudden urge to go to the farthest part of the cemetery, where the older graves rested. I turned the light on my phone and made my way behind the graves, closely to the tree line to avoid disturbing the peace. I tend to look at my feet when I walk and I was doing just that when I got the feeling I was being watched. An uneasy feeling lingered at the base of my neck. I had walked for a while and could no longer see the lights of the car. I began to point my phone around, behind me, toward the trees to my left, and the grave sites to my right. I froze at the sight of it. Seemingly hovering above a stone marker, the creature whipped its pale head around, which sort of glowed a faint eerie blue. Its face was devoid of any features, except for slight indents where its eyes should be. As my light touched it, it revealed a mouth full of thin teeth and let out an ear-piercing shriek, sinking to its hands and feet in a crouch and disappearing into the thick of the woods before I could blink. I was still for a solid five seconds, trying to comprehend what I had seen. 
It finally processed and I turned to run as fast as I possibly could back to the car. I was out of breath and seeing spots when I reached it, dove in and shut and locked the door. My BF, bewildered, asked what was wrong but I shouted over him to drive away right now. I watched out the back glass to see if we were being followed. Sketching the creature as soon as I got home, I recounted what happened over and over, trying to disprove to myself what I thought had happened. I could find no logical rationality to explain it away. I saw what I saw. I put it from my mind though, not wanting to dwell on unseen things seen, and haven't visited the cemetery since. Last night I was watching Netflix, an episode in Volume 2 of Love, Death and Robots, The Tall Grass. I was wrapped the whole time, clenching a pillow to my chest, mouth hanging open, palms sweating. I had seen those creatures before, or one of them, and decided to turn to Google to see what I could find out about them. My search led me here and seeing so many testimonies made me want to share as well. Thanks for reading. TLDR don't go to a cemetery during a thunderstorm under a full moon on the eve of the winter solstice. The Woods. This is my story, I'll post the full version here because I failed to mention what happened the next night. I recently posted this in another subreddit and was told to share it here. So here it goes. This is a very long story and I'm not the best at writing things out but I'll try. I live in Georgia, the state, and a rural town not too far from a major city. There's a set of woods that's behind our house and it divides two neighborhoods and it's about a mile wide of that. Strange occurrences have always surrounded these woods. Small things like random trash, tarps act. I should mention it's more swampy marsh than woods so it makes camping in there impossible. One night I was taking our dog out. He stays in the back half of the house due to him not liking the other dogs. I took him out the side door and walked around the house to the fence. For some reason when we left the house he was absolutely terrified. He didn't want to go out, very unusual for a dog who's quick to snatch someone's soul if prompted. Not thinking about it we pushed onward. After he tinkled, we walked back. This is when I noticed it. Or rather heard it. Crunching of leaves. At first I thought it was one of our dozen cats on the property until I realized it was matching my steps. If I walked you could hear it walking. If I stopped, it stopped. There's a small clearing between woods where one of sheds is. That's when we saw it. My dog was first to see something and then I saw some. I dunno. Creature? It was taller than the shed so maybe a good 8 feet tall and it darted across the clearing at a crazy fast speed. My dog who again isn't scared of anything bolts so fast I dropped his leash and he ran to the door whining. I was quickly behind him. Once we were inside I quickly bolted the door and ran to tell my girlfriend what happened. She immediately wanted to investigate saying it's probably a woodland creature. Armed with two flashlights we went out the front door. As we walked towards the wood line we could hear something moving around. It sounded maybe 200 yards away. As we scanned with our flashlights we saw nothing but kept hearing it. Then we heard it get closer and closer until it was maybe 20 feet away. Still nothing. No eyes, not even an animal call just rustling. My girlfriend now scared heads for the house. I decided to check with the neighbors to see if maybe one of their many dogs got out. When I arrived at his house my neighbor, who will call Dave, explained that all his dogs were accounted for. Curious he came to investigate. This is when I noticed that whatever this thing was followed me along the wood line to Dave's house and was now behind Dave's house. Gun in hand we went into his backyard scanning for something. We could hear it rustling or maybe running. About 100 yards away in thick swampy woods. Way too thick for a person to walk and let alone run in. Then it stopped. It was dead silent. Scanning and on edge we hear and see nothing and then bam all of a sudden it was 5 feet in front of sprinting at me. It slammed the fence so hard it rocked it back and forth. Dave, shot randomly at well. Nothing. We never saw it never had to get close to us. Again as I mentioned the woods are thick. 
Too thick to run and so what teleported silently in front of us and slammed the gate. Spooked we were about to run. Then we heard it. It was human in nature but not English. It sounded. Alien-like? Not a known language. Dave, a hunter for the last 40 years still to this day can't explain what that was. Anyway after we heard that we bolted. He covered me and I ran to my house. Not 10 minutes later we both hear a loud explosion coming from the woods. It shook our houses and flickered our power. I ran outside to see what it was and of course nothing but when Dave came out and confirmed he felt the same thing we were both once again terrified. Moments later a few strangers from the neighborhood came driving down to our cul-de-sac and they all agreed the blast sound they heard came from behind our house. 911 was called and the two police officers interviewed us separately. Our stories matched. The responding officers refused to go anywhere near those woods. They took the report and left. To this day we're still not sure what that encounter was. Also Dave doesn't go outside at night anymore. It spooked him that bad. The next night, earlier in the day my mother-in-law, a police officer for a town 40 minutes away, installed two motion-activated trail cams along the woods edge. They were brand new. Keep that detail in mind. Thinking maybe we'd see something we waited for nightfall. Later that evening I went outside to feed our outdoor cats. That's when I heard it again. Rustling. This time not taking any chances I ran inside and told everyone what I heard. They all piled by the back door and urged me to go out there and look. Reluctantly I agreed. I took my flashlight and walked to the edge of the woods. Knowing there was a trail cam covering this area I figured if it got me it would be on camera and my sacrifice wouldn't be for nothing. As I got to the woods edge I could hear it still rustling. I'm shaking at this point because I could tell it was maybe less than 15 yards in front of me. Everyone at the door was watching me and could hear this thing. Then it got quiet. For a moment it was gone, or so I thought. Just as I'm scanning with my flashlight trying desperately to see a normal woodland creature so I can laugh this whole thing away boom something fell out of a tree and hit the ground so hard it shook the soil beneath my feet. It was so close to that I was sure it was gonna lunge out the brush and snag me. I dropped my flashlight and ran 100 yards back to the house in what felt like two seconds. I screamed get in the house as everyone was already scampering into the house. They heard and felt the thud too. Our neighbor Dave, called my mother-in-law to ask what that loud crash was. For him to have heard it from well over 700 yards away is insane to me. Once the adrenaline died down we realized that this happened right next to the trail cam. Problem solved we got evidence of this thing. The next morning we checked the SD cards on the trail cams. They have videos up until 11.47 PM. The rest is corrupted. They were both brand new trail cams and SD cards. We reset everything and set them back up and to this day we've still never encountered the creature again nor caught anything on the camera. I'm sorry if this was poorly written, I did my best. My skinwalker encounter growing up. I was just talking to my boyfriend about some weird stuff I saw as a kid. He's a hardcore believer in skinwalkers and won't say it or even let me say it after it gets dark in fear of attracting one. My story starts with coming back from the store with my family. In my village, an entire new neighborhood was being built. Mind you, I live in an area that used to have a lot of forest around me, which has since been destroyed due to people building houses. There was a dirt slash gravel road in the middle of the woods from the main road that led to a shortcut to my house. I was maybe 9 or 10 at the time, and I distinctly remember sitting in the middle seat in the middle row of our family minivan, so I got a clear view in between the driver's seat and passenger seat. I was talking with my younger siblings goofing off, and I looked up to see it crouched on the road. It looked almost exactly like the picture you get when you google the rake, it had pale gray skin, it was freakishly slender, and it had eyes like reflectors. I freaked out and screamed out saying something along the lines of what is that? And both of my parents turned around asked what I was talking about. 
I burst into tears and see it run over behind a tree. It's so tall. I see it peek from the tree a couple of times and explain what it looked like to my mom while hysterical. My mom didn't believe me at all and got mad at me for trying to scare my siblings. Around that time I used to watch a lot of those ghosts caught on tape. Type stuff on YouTube and I'd show my younger siblings which resulted in many nightmares for them. My dad on the other hand said it was probably just a deer. It looked nothing like a deer. I still remember those eyes. When we passed by the tree I saw it run behind, nothing was there. It was completely dark, I thought I must have imagined it, until my dad told me he saw something too when we got home. He told me he saw something out of the corner of his eye but didn't get a good look since I started screaming and he turned around to look at me. To this day, it still scares me, and I never walk too close to the woods at night. Strange Sounds Hello all. I'm from the Northeast Ohio area and for the past year I've been working and living in Pennsylvania doing work with COVID. Typically I'm in a new city in a new hotel every week. I've been all over the state, typically driving 100 to 300 miles a day through winding mountain roads. Pennsylvania can be a strange place at night, especially with a lack of street lighting on many roads. On one occasion while driving down a back road through central PA, a giant dog hopped the guard rail and ran in front of my truck. On all fours, its head was at the hood of my truck. A 2020 Dodge 2500, the hood of the truck is six feet from the ground. It made prolonged eye contact with me with sharp piercing yellow eyes as it crossed the road and continued into the woods. Flash forward to now, I'm in the Philadelphia area. The area my hotel occupies is newly developed, so the parking lot of the hotel is well lit but the surrounding area is wooded and dark. I'm often awake until early morning hours and keep my blinds open. The other night, I was looking out the window and saw an odd white shape in the parking lot. It was absolutely featureless from what I could tell, kind of like a blob with thick short legs. I was so shocked I did a double take and it was gone. Tonight about 30 minutes ago, I was laying in bed watching TV. Window open blinds up. I heard this odd noise. The only way I can describe it is it sounded like a baby's cry, but muffled and raspy, and it sounded like it was being carried away as if a strong gust of wind was blowing it out of earshot. I heard it three times and saw nothing out of my window. But I have never heard a sound like that. Could this possible be a crawler? This happened to me while I was in college, 20 plus years ago, and I never forgot it. It was one of the first times I ever remember seeing true fear and panic on someone's face. This part will only spatially make sense if you are familiar with Monterey, CA. I lived in the seaside area, and my college girlfriend lived in Carmel Valley. Sometimes when I would drive her home late at night we would take a lightly used roadway called Laurelais Grade, which was long, dark, and full of winding turns. It also let us out near her house so it was a minor time saver. We were driving home late one night and we were chatting and laughing about something or another, as we usually did on the ride, when she looks out the window, stops mid-sentence, screams, then looks forward and yells go go go. She is terrified. I floor it and ask her what is happening and she won't talk, she is literally next to me hyperventilating. I drove unsafely fast through the twists and turns of the road and a few minutes later slowed down, assuming that whatever scared her was fast in our rear view. By this point she is calmed a bit as well and I ask her again, what happened? Her first reply was you didn't see it? She then proceeds to tell me that as we were driving around a corner, she was looking out the window and my headlights lit up a human looking animal, standing along the side of the road disjointedly on all fours with a human-looking face that looked like it was hissing. My first reaction was that it might actually be a hurt person and maybe we should go back or call 911, but she was adamant that no, it was not a person, and there was no way we were going back. 
We got to her house a few minutes later and out of extra precaution called the local police and asked them to go and check the area. We never had any follow up from them. Fast forward several years, 15 or so, and I was telling a coworker who was from that area about the incident. She got really spooked and when I finished she told me that Lower Lace Grade was known for strange sightings and is a spot that UFO fanatics tend to go to. I'm not a UFO guy, which I thought was interesting. The rake stole my freedom. So let's all be honest here. Everyone knows that the rake is nothing more than a creepy pasta. However, you cannot deny that people around the world are seeing and having legitimate experiences with this creature or rather one that resembles the being in the stories, myself included. I've grown up with a relatively open mind in regards to strange phenomenon and things that aren't generally accepted by mainstream science or society but always approach things with appropriate skepticism. I have spent a very large majority of my life in the woods hunting, fishing and mountain climbing miles deep in the back country and so within all of that time I've observed many different animals, plants and sometimes things I just simply cannot explain. I've gone camping and trekking solo many times in my life, it was liberating to just pack whatever you needed to survive and go miles deep into the back country where animals aren't even afraid of you simply because they aren't familiar with humans, it felt so special to be the only one immersed in that environment but not anymore. Now, hidden behind all of the natural beauty is underlying anxiety, fear and legitimate danger. An environment that once felt so comforting and therapeutic turned into one that drove me absolutely mad with questions and uncertainties and is now one I will not enter alone for I know what is possible and what is truly roaming around the forests of North America. It was 2016 in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania that I saw a creature that forever changed my life and the way I perceive the world we live in. The first time I had ever heard of the creature dubbed the rake was during a conversation with a friend who had lived in the area for years and had encountered this creature on multiple occasions in very close proximity to his house. I remember him asking me if I had ever saw anything strange in the large plot of woods across the street from his house which at the time I had not however, long before it was brought up I always had a deep feeling in my chest about this plot of woods, I didn't know what it was, I just knew that it carried a very heavy, dark energy that was strong enough to encourage you to stay out. My friend took out their phone and showed me the picture of the rake that comes up with any Google search, a very generic picture. I laughed it off as he warned me about the creature because I genuinely thought he was just growing marijuana or something in the woods and didn't want me to find it. I couldn't have been any more wrong. Months had passed with little more than strange noises at night and the sound of some cats being carried off into the dark until the day that changed my life happened. It was midnight, a rainstorm had just dumped a bunch of rain and me and a coworker at the time had just clocked out and were heading to the friend's house who had warned me originally about the creature. His house is on a long straight road with a dead end, very few houses on one side, woods on the other. As we are heading down the road with high beams on my coworker slams on the brakes and starts freaking out saying that he had just saw the creature kneeling down on the shoulder of the road. Instantly, without thought I jumped out of the car and immediately heard running and crashing through the woods in a parallel line to the road. Thankfully due to the hard braking, the car shifted slightly so that the high beams were pointed into the woods and that's when I saw it. That's when my life changed, my beliefs shattered and my reality turned upside down. A six foot tall naked creature with grayish white skin and long arms ran through the section of the woods fully illuminated by the headlights giving me at least 15 seconds of uninterrupted visual contact with the creature firmly imprinting it into my head. It ran just like a human being, however it was incredibly fast and jumping over any obstacle in the way until it reached the point where the headlights no longer illuminated the woods. It then pretended to jump and run deeper into the woods however it actually turned and headed back to the road where I lost sight of it in the dark part of the woods for about 30 seconds. As I was standing in the middle of the road, absolutely dumbfounded with my jaw to the floor trying to comprehend the severity of the situation, 
It then crawled out from the woods and crossed the road on all fours about 60 yards away from me and disappeared into the woods on the other side. I've been tormented by the creature since. It makes me confused, sad, curious, I can't get the image out of my head, I can't forget the feelings this creature gave me while I lived there, playing and toying with my head and waking life and in my dreams. I don't go into the back country alone anymore, I can't enjoy the solitude without anxiety ruining it, I can't be free. This creature exists and so do others that we just can't understand and it's important that people realize this so they can enjoy nature while also being safe. I'm not sure how this post will be taken and I'm not really sure why I felt like no was the time to come out about my story, but it's eating me alive, it's given me crippling anxiety and I have to do something to try to get this off my chest. Believe me or don't, that doesn't matter to me. I just wanted people to be safe and I want my freedom back and if coming out about this will help then I'll do anything. The world truly isn't all that it seems. Did my boyfriend see a crawler? So this happened about two years ago, in, kind of, upstate NY. I say kind of because I'm closer to NYC, but outside of Westchester. It has woodsy areas and inner city areas. Before we lived together, we both lived with our parents. It was about a 15 to 20 minutes walk if you took the regular sidewalk but there's abandoned railroads that basically create a shortcut. These tracks to me are scary because a lot of homeless people live there, not that I'm afraid of homeless people, but I don't want to bump into one on abandoned tracks in the night. There's also been violent crimes that happened on them, and a semi-famous serial killer has even killed on these tracks in the early 90s. Basically as a kid, I was told to stay away from it for obvious reasons so fear of this railroad was inflicted in me at a young age. Anyway, he was walking home from my mom's one night and calls me breathing heavily and freaking out, telling me he saw a skinwalker. I had literally no idea what these were until he told me. And I honestly thought he was making things up. His description, hunched over, naked and pale. Big, piercing reflective yellow eyes and very very skinny. His height was about 5 apostrophe 8, head regular size, mouth regular. His arms and legs were longer than his body, he was naked with absolutely no clothing on. No hair literally almost identical to Voldemort from Harry Potter or the Lord of the Rings Gollum. It had deep clicking sound, that almost sounded like a growl and when the thing noticed that he noticed it, it let out a huge shriek at which that point he ran the rest of the way home. I didn't believe him but he's a tough guy and I could hear the fear in his voice so I was concerned and did some research. Maybe two days later, in the day, we were walking in a different but close area of the tracks and found a pretty much newborn baby deer dead with a piece of its backside pretty much ripped out. Like something grabbed it and ripped a chunk of its body out. It was sad and terrifying because there's nothing in my area that would have done that and birds would have picked at its entire body, not just a small part. A day or so later the entire body of the baby deer was gone. That's the moment I believed him, and when I started joining communities on crawlers and cryptid creatures. Encounter in Wisconsin Hello all, I want to share an experience I had while training with my NG unit at FT. McCoy, why? I have not ever been big into paranormal activity as a subject of interest. I originally got into these topics by gawking at some of the more outlandish things in our slash high strangeness. But, the deeper I dug the more I found what seems to be genuine people sharing real experiences. This sub in particular strikes me as largely honest and earnest. In that spirit I wanted to share a story about one of the few unexplainable instances that have happened in my life. Certainly the most significant. Sorry for typos. I'm doing this on mobile. I am a member of the NG in Wisconsin. I moved from enlisted to officer via ROTC, and was attached to a unit in my prospective MOS while in the program. I don't really want to give specifics on my service, as the community is small enough to identify me to peers in the unlikely circumstance there on this subreddit. 
In 2014 my platoon decided to conduct nighttime land navigation at FT.MC Koi from 2030 to 30. While the army is typically all about buddy pairs, night land nav is one of the few cases we can do things solo if we so choose. Having done night land nav plenty before I step off alone, compass, map, and headlamp in hand. For those who do not know, Land navigation involves seeking out markers on a course by plotting their coordinates on a map and moving their via terrain reference and compass. At night this is typically done without light as much as possible. When light is used it is red. This minimizes damage to night vision. Obstensibly, these methods also keep you concealed in a tactical environment when employed with noise discipline. I bring this up so you can understand a few things about my circumstance. I was moving through the woods while making a token effort to be hard to spot slash here. The woodland I was in was part of a larger forest system, but was frequently traveled. That night we had some 15-ish soldiers clomping around. My illumination was a toggleable headlamp, but was toggled to be red when turned on. To cycle to white light I have to turn it off twice. My assigned points will take me to the other side of the course and back. A good hour and a half of walking as the crow flies. They're more or less in a straight line so I estimate two and a half hours out and back. I know if I come back too early I might be given another set of points. So I resolve to walk out, take a break for an hour then mosey on back. The first half of this goes as planned. I get my points without much trouble and wind up sitting on a hillside at around 10 at night. It's cloudy, but the moon is full. I can see wellish when the sky is clear, poorly when it's not. Occasionally, I see a red light bobbing in the distance below me. Once a pair of platoon members pass down the hill from me, using white light to try to read their map. I startle them when I ask if they needed help. At the end of my break there's no more motion in my area. Most people had likely already walked out and back, or they were too lost and took the handrailing road home. I'm feeling pretty at one with my surroundings, having sat in the same spot eating stale skittles for a good long while. Owls hoot, trees sway, all is well. I trot down my hill and step through some brush. I'm in a clearing where prairie intersects forest. There are some dead trees in the area, one of them is split halfway up. At the top, tilde 15 feet, I can make out a head and shoulders silhouette against the clouds backlit by the moon. I walk up to ask how they got up there, and if they're stuck, when the shadow twitches and I get the impression it's turned toward me. I stand there looking at it, and it's maybe looking at me. The situation feels off, but I'm not going to let a battle buddy punk me. I ask if they need a hand. Mid-sentence, the moonlight comes back. It's clear the thing on the tall stump is not a soldier. This moonlight glimpse is the best look I get at the thing. It looks like a stretched out bald person. Its long arms are clutching the stump. I can't make out the face, but it looks pinched. By that I mean I couldn't see its eyes or mouth, like they were small and in the middle of the head. It's skinny like it hasn't eaten, but it's tall and obviously strong to have made such a vertical climb. It was definitely facing me, it probably was the whole time I was in the clearing. Maybe since I came down the hill. Maybe my speech startled it. I swear loudly. It rapidly scurries down the trunk. I flick on my red light and catch it on all fours moving toward the brush line in the direction I'm heading. Automatically, I keep toggling the lamp to be in white light. That means it goes off, then to flashing red. In the flash I see the thing at the wood line, but I think it's flipped around and is backing in, probably to keep eyes in me. In the few seconds it takes for me to get to white light it's gone. I scan the tree line which is silent. When it moved there was a scraping noise, plus the woodland brush is dense. If it was still running I would hear it. I reason that it must have stopped. It must still be watching me. I fumble out my knife and keep looking around the woods in front of me. After ages I start inching along a perpendicular path to my initial route of travel, an angle that will link me up with the hardball road that runs up and down the side of the course. Once in the road I can take it back to where my platoon is parked. 
My major problem is that the road is 10 minutes of walking away from my current position, mostly woodland. That can't be helped, I have to get out of the clearing first. My progress on that front is painfully slow. I'm fighting my natural urge to freeze in place like a deer in the headlights. After sidestepping a good 10 meters I hear a corresponding rustling and think I see movement. It's enough to get me to turn and bolt, right into a downed log which trips me. I scramble up to my feet and look back to the wood line where there is an audible commotion. I glimpse a leg and ass moving back into the woods. At this point I'm done with the whole situation, but don't want to run again. I start power walking to the road, turning to look as much as I can while seeing what the thing is doing. Over the movement of my own kit I can hear it moving alongside me, parallel. As I near the end of the clearing I think I hear it picking up pace as if to cut me off. I make the decision to sprint. When I enter the woods my path is clear, but I think I can hear it in my periphery. I don't stop, and run hard until I hit the paved road. I bite it hard a few times along the way, but recover with a frantic speed I cannot consciously replicate. Once in the road I run perpendicular to the forest until I don't think I hear it anymore. I'm winded from my breakout run. From the middle of the road have good visibility and decide to walk to catch my breath. It's quiet for a while. Then I hear a branch move around 30 feet in the air from the woods I had just fled. I snap my gaze up, see a pale ovular face, half in shadow peeking at me from around a trunk. I take off again. After way too long I make it back to the headlights of our LMTVs. It's 1215. What happened cadet? Did you get lost are there? You're covered in mud did you fall down? Why are you out of breath? I got lost in my way back. Yeah, I rolled down Pike's Peak. I ran to get back in time. Lol cadet was lost. I knew better than to claim I saw a monster. Already my reaction had left me feeling foolish. In the year since drilling at FMC I have never experienced anything like that again. McCoy does not have a history of disappearances, as far as I know neither do the two closest towns, Sparta and Toma. I've done night land nav alone a few times since without issue. This is less from courage, and more from me deciding I must have misinterpreted a the situation. After diving into paranormal subreddits, I'm coming around to the idea I should trust my own account. Maybe the world is weirder than I thought. If anyone has had similar experiences elsewhere, or, hopefully, an explanation please let me know. Thanks for making it this far. Possible sighting? So I was herbexing at an abandoned phosphate mine last night located in central Florida and myself and a friend heard a noise I can't quite explain. For reference this location is surrounded by nothing but farms and distant mines for like 10 to 15 miles and it has been abandoned since roughly 2008. I heard the noise in question while walking down one of the roads after the sun had set, it was just me and my three friends when me and one of the people I was with heard it. It sounded like a retching noise mixed with a scream it was maybe medium in pitch but guttural. It was way too loud for us both to have imagined it. It also happened twice maybe 10 seconds apart but far away from each other. I was a park ranger as my last job and I'm pretty familiar with the wildlife in the area and it didn't sound like anything I have heard in my time working as a ranger near that area. I also have Rebex the location multiple times prior and had a few weird experiences but nothing like this. Anyone have any idea what I could have heard? This happened to me while I was in college, 20 plus years ago, and I never forgot it. It was one of the first times I ever remember seeing true fear and panic on someone's face. This part will only spatially make sense if you are familiar with Monterey, CA. I lived in the seaside area, and my college girlfriend lived in Carmel Valley. Sometimes when I would drive her home late at night we would take a lightly used roadway called Laurelais Grade, which was long, dark, and full of winding turns. It also let us out near her house so it was a minor time saver. We were driving home late one night and we were chatting and laughing about something or another, 
as we usually did on the ride, when she looks out the window, stops mid-sentence, screams, then looks forward and yells go go go. She is terrified. I floor it and ask her what is happening and she won't talk, she is literally next to me hyperventilating. I drove unsafely fast through the twists and turns of the road and a few minutes later slowed down, assuming that whatever scared her was fast in our rear view. By this point she is calmed a bit as well and I ask her again, what happened? Her first reply was you didn't see it? She then proceeds to tell me that as we were driving around a corner, she was looking out the window and my headlights lit up a human looking animal, standing along the side of the road disjointedly on all fours with a human-looking face that looked like it was hissing. My first reaction was that it might actually be a hurt person and maybe we should go back or call 911, but she was adamant that no, it was not a person, and there was no way we were going back. We got to her house a few minutes later and out of extra precaution called the local police and asked them to go and check the area. We never had any follow-up from them. Fast forward several years, 15 or so, and I was telling a coworker who was from that area about the incident. She got really spooked and when I finished she told me that Lower Lace Grade was known for strange sightings and is a spot that UFO fanatics tend to go to. I'm not a UFO guy, which I thought was interesting. Seen it again after 4 months. So I've made two other posts on this but this time it's getting repetitive. This sighting was last week, it was around 8.40 pm so it was getting dark but not dark enough for a flashlight. I went outside to our shed we have about 20 yards from our back door to feed our mini pigs. I go out there, open it up, get the food, turn around towards the house, feed the pigs, and turn around to walk back to the shed to put the containers back in the shed. Well, as I turn around I see this white skinny figure peeking its head around the shed, after like a few seconds it just dips, silent as hell. Now I'm not sure if it was a guy who likes to watch people feed farm animals in the evening which I'm sure is a fun hobby but I don't think it's a popular hobby either. I'll let y'all know if I get attacked and die or something. My Australian crawler sightings, and the reason I sleep with all my curtains closed. I don't sleep with curtains open because of crawlers. I'm a grown ass woman now and I still can't sleep at night with the curtains open. In fact, when I moved into my current house, I installed dual curtain rods so that even if my light blocking curtains are open, there's a layer of privacy shears behind them to block any sight. I have seen the crawler four times. I don't truly know if it's the same one, they were all seen at different locations. It's been years since I last saw one but I still feel like they were the same creature, or at least, they knew me. The first time, I was a very small child. Perhaps four? Maybe five. My house was an old style flood house, so it was technically two stories tall but under the house was where we kept the car and our laundry room. Upstairs was where the living areas were. We were one of the only houses there. It was in the early days of the town and there were only a few other houses on the cul-de-sac. The back of our property was maybe 500 meters from the ocean, but you couldn't see or hear the coastline from the house. There were some light rainforests surrounding our fully fenced house. My bedroom faced the back of the property. I woke up one night, which wasn't unusual for me because I was a very light sleeper. This particular night, my parents hadn't closed my curtains. When I looked towards my window, I could see it. Keep in mind, I was on the second floor. It was looking through my window. I couldn't see much, the only light was coming from outside, but I could see the silhouette of its body. It was pale and thin but still the frame of the creature was huge, easily 2 meters tall. It was hanging off my roof, holding on to the frame of my window, and even though I couldn't see its face I just knew it was looking at me. I was terrified. It's been almost two decades since I saw it but I can still remember the intense fear I felt. It took me so much courage to get out of bed and walk to my parents' room, where I finally fell back asleep. My parents told me it was just a dream. The next time I remember seeing it, I was probably about seven or so. 
I had moved houses probably a few months before, and my new house, about a 16-hour drive from my old place, was a single-story home, but still on the coast of the country. It was a lot further from the ocean, about 5 kms, but very much the same kind of area. We were one of the only houses in the area and I had no neighbors. I woke up one night because I heard something banging against the metal fence. In Australia we have a brand that makes fences and roofs out of corrugated metal that's been painted. They're quite common, 6 feet high cream colored metal fences. And they make an unmistakable noise when something hits them. I have no idea how anything could climb one of these fences. They're completely smooth with nothing to grab onto. Even in my teens I tried sneaking out by jumping the fence and I just slid right down again. At first when I woke up I thought some birds must have landed on the fence, but the noise continued for longer than it would take a bird to land. My next thought was that someone was trying to break into the house. I turned over in bed to face the window and saw it. Well, I actually didn't see it at first. It was very dark out and I don't remember much of a moon. As my eyes adjusted I could only just make out the figure hunched down in front of my window. Even in the hunched down pose it was still huge. This time I didn't run to my parents. Their bedroom was no longer across the hall, it was all the way on the opposite side of the house, and I'd have to pass so many uncovered windows to get there. I don't remember when I fell asleep, but I eventually woke up in the morning, and once again my parents told me I must have been dreaming. However from then on, they always came into my bedroom and closed my blinds before bed. The next time I saw it, I was 9. I know I was 9 because I had just moved schools and made friends with a girl who will call Casey. She invited me to stay at her house one night, and I was so excited. She was the first friend I'd made since moving schools and it had been ages since I'd gotten to have a sleepover. Everything went great, the night was perfectly normal and I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of Casey crying. I sat up in bed and asked her what was wrong. She pointed towards the window, where I saw the thing again. Unfortunately for me, Casey had a night light, and I could see much more of the creature than I ever had before. It looked so crusty and dry. It was almost totally white, devoid of any real identifying features, except it stared at us with black eyes and mouth agape. Casey's window was small and it had to hunch down to see us. We both got up and ran crying to her mom. She turned on the outside light and brought us back inside the bedroom, and pointed out a large gum tree outside the window that she tried to explain just had been what we saw. We argued with her, the thing we saw was right against the window, not several meters away, and it wasn't to the left, it was to the right. Casey's mom eventually let us sleep on the couch. A couple months later, Casey stayed over at my house. When I woke up in the morning Casey was gone. I asked my parents, and they told me that Casey had gotten up in the night and started crying, begging to go home. When I saw her again on Monday at school, she told me she got up at night to go to the bathroom, and when she walked past the lounge room, she could see the tall skin monster crawling through the trees at the bottom of my backyard. She never came to my house again and I lost touch when I moved schools a year later. I don't know what it was I saw. It can have been sleep paralysis, I was able to move and speak and everything. And it wasn't a dream because someone else saw it. I don't know if this relates in any way, but when my partner moved into my house a few months ago, he opened the curtains one night before bed. This time it was a full moon. I had already fallen asleep. I'm now living in a two-story house with my bedroom on the second floor again. I woke up in the middle of the night to my partner getting up and closing the curtains. When I asked him why, he told me he had a nightmare that there was a tall, skinny, white man clinging onto my roof, almost like a spider, and it was peering into my bedroom. He said it must have been a hallucination, he had been up all night playing video games, and when he got up from bed it jumped back onto the roof. I still haven't told him, but his description of what he saw is exactly what I saw the first time I saw the crawler. Only, now I'm living in a busy neighborhood with plenty of houses, unlike past experiences where I've been one of the only houses on the block and surrounded by forests. 
I have heard mimicking many times, but have always drawn it up to imagination. Sometimes I will hear my partner walk into the room and say hello at night but when I roll over I see the light coming down the hallway and I realize that he's still in the lounge room on the computer. I've heard my mother's voice a few times too. Throughout my childhood and all the homes I've lived in, we've had issues with dogs barking at nothing, and security motion detector lights randomly coming on at night when nobody is there. I don't know if those two things are related or not but I've heard similar happenings in crawler related stories before and thought I'd mention it. So those are my stories. I don't know if I've seen a crawler, or something else, or if I've seen anything at all. But I found this subreddit and I thought hey, at least there are people who have seen things similar to me. I don't know what I ran into that night. I, I don't know how to explain this bit here we go. To begin with for context I am with two buddies, males, and we were at their house so we webbed into the woods because we thought it would be fun, we also live near Zinsville and Dresden, Ohio, but the weird stuff happens. We start walking and everything is fine then we feel like we are watched, me first then another on then the last friend, that's the first thing. Next his twigs start snapping towards his neighbor's house but we see nothing that snapped them. Lastly as we are moving across this maybe a max 1 inch deep water creek we hear it. The bellowing if it can be described as it. It was a mixture between a deer buck and the deepness slash guttural sound of a bear. We dot booked. IT. As we are running out we keep hearing it not getting louder dot we make it out we never saw it and we don't think it saw us. I'm skating 3 hours after it happened I apostrophe am dot scared and don't know what it is slash was dot pls help me identify this thing I'm scared we are in a house right now but we don't know what will happen. Back in August or September my boyfriend and I were outside in my backyard and out of nowhere we heard very loud panting. It sounded like it was coming from the left side of us but it felt like we were surrounded by it. It was like a huge dog panting directly and my left ear also sort of vibrating all around us. Whatever it was we couldn't see it because it was behind some bushes. I screamed really loud because I've heard of dogmen through others experiences and that's what I thought it was. The thing continued to pan after I screamed so it wasn't scared off or phased at all by it. A few weeks before that my BF heard something that sounded like a shovel dragging on concrete. That is another noise people hear when these dogmen are around. Any thoughts of what it was or any similar experiences? Please share. On Monday, October 18, 2021 midday I took my 7 and 2 and a half year old sons to a state park 1.5 miles up the road from my house. Rock State Park Hidden Valley Area. The park is small. Four parking spots and a half mile trail that follows a creek. The trail ends at a fork in the creek with a beach head about 20 feet long. Six people would be a crowd. Both of my sons are familiar with this park as it is in a rotation of three parks we choose from to go on a little hike once a week. The trail is moderate with some inclines, natural obstacles and occasional narrowing due to lack of maintenance. My eldest son is comfortable being 30 to 50 feet ahead of me while I pace my youngest. Nothing is out of the ordinary. Just a normal hike my eldest reaches the beachhead 15 to 20 seconds before us. We approach the creek beach and my youngest is on my left starting to mess with rocks and throwing them in the creek. My oldest is 10 to 15 feet to my right messing around throwing rocks in the water. I bend down to cuff my pant leg and hear a blood curling scream from my oldest. I look up at him and he is screaming falling backwards feverishly kicking his legs. I follow his line of sight to across the creek. Perched on a large flat rock is an animal I could not understand. It was no more than 20 to 25 feet away and its dimensions seemed so large it looked as if it could leap the creek in one stride. A barrel chest with clear defined pectoral muscles shoulders and biceps no different than a man just a lot larger. Bulging eyes and a stubby snout like a hyena. It looked as it was in a sprinter starting position not an animal on all fours. Its thighs and hind end were noticeably large. 
The mass of this animal was unnatural. The ears faced forward with hair tufts on the side and tops of the head. The face was looked as if it was on high alert. Similar to when your dog has quick head movements because you're getting ready to throw a ball. It kept switching between my son screaming falling backwards into trail running away and me screaming picking up my other son. As I am frantically trying to get between it and my first son. It almost looks as it was in the lunging position. That or backing up. My perspective was head on before turning into the trail. I get to him and we are out of direct sight. I yell at son number one to run. The weirdest thing would happen. The seven year old would start sprinting and crying and after 30 feet he would turn around almost in a complete daze not understand what's happening then I would have to yell at him again to run. He would run, cry stop, dazed. This happened three times. I still don't understand how shock or fear could do that. The animal did not follow us down the trail. The thoughts going through my head I wouldn't wish on my enemies. It was only time in my life where I knew I could not protect my children. The buck knife on my hip was no better than a pillow. The moment I told my seven-year-old he might have to take his younger brother's hand and get back to the car as fast as you can has left a scar deeper in my mind than this unexplainable animal. I apologize for the story structure and horrible grammar. Even though there was no mistaking what I witnessed, it doesn't matter. Trying to explain this to anyone is pointless. I like to think I am considerably self-aware. I cannot understand why my mind is forcing itself to debunk what I saw. I was undoubtedly afraid but my focus was crystal clear. Kids, safe, at all costs. I was laser focused on my surroundings and what was in it. None of my emotions distorted my vision or made me misinterpret my surroundings. I never encountered Dogman or Wolfman, only Bigfoot when I was a 10 or 11 year old. Ever since after that I have had PTSD about sleeping at night, about going into any forest alone, going into any forest at night. I used to have nightmares about the encounter where I try to scream but nothing comes out. I would always wake up terrified after waking from one of those TBH. Though there was one night when I was a kid around the same age I encountered Bigfoot. I was sleeping when a loud growling from outside the window woke me, I screamed for my mom when she came into the room I asked her to turn the light on, TBH I was afraid to sleep that night. So perhaps a dogman or a wolfman was trying to get me to look towards the window that night. I do wonder what would have happened if I had decided to look toward the window that night. A French woman and her friend are in a mountain forest near Jura, France when they encounter a upright canine cryptid while dog walking on a wooded pathway. Was it a dogman? I would like to share what happened to me in mid-April 2015. It was the end of the afternoon and the light was good. I had decided to take a little walk, in the Jura Mountains Forest, eastern France, where I live, with a friend and my little dog. We chose a place where I parked my car and we began to walk in. It didn't take long before I began to feel nervous. As we were walking we heard a horrible noise. It sounded like doves, but they were not singing but they were screaming. It was the first time I have heard this noise. I laughed and said to my friend, I feel like they don't want us in the forest for some reason. We pushed on and the path was wide as we got further along. Suddenly, I noticed something moving down the track to the side of us. I realized it was an animal and I thought it was a large dog. The color was very black. I was upset and I told my friend I'd rather go back to the car. I didn't want my little dog to cross what I thought was a big dog off the leash. Luckily, I had my little dog on a leash. I started to turn around and return to the car, but my friend stayed and watched to see if she could place the rogue dog without an owner. I was walking for a few minutes when I heard my friend screaming run. Run. Without looking back, I accelerated my pace and arrived at the car out of breath. I put my little dog into the car. 
Before I got in the car, I looked down the path and I saw a deep black colored creature walking into the forest away from us. I was so surprised and shocked, I couldn't believe it. I could only see the top up to the shoulders of the creature. My friend who joined me at the car explained to me what she saw. She said that this creature moved by slipping at high speed along the side then seemed to get its momentum and straighten up onto its hind legs. My friend told me, and this is what I can confirm, that she was over 2 meters tall. We couldn't see its eyes. The creature stopped when it saw my friend. They looked at each other for a few seconds, then the creature decided to turn into the wood. My friend told me it had a dog's head, and the ears were pinned down. This creature had a muscular body, torso and thighs, that was covered with deep black hair. We were shocked. We later decided to go back to the forest and see if there was an explanation to all this, but didn't notice anything strange that we would answer this puzzle. And then I told my friend, we should try to get back to this place before nightfall. So, we did this two weeks later. It's strange, you see, because, when we got out of the car on the evening visit we immediately felt something was wrong. The atmosphere was very different. There was complete silence. We began to walk and after a few minutes, I felt anxious again. I decided to go back and my friend tried to push on into the trees but she also came back running. The creature was there again. It was standing in the woods, looking at us. I had not seen the creature this time thankfully. We would like to be courageous enough to take a picture of the creature. I know that we are not the only ones to have seen this dog man, and we are sure that it is what we saw. We learned that someone else saw it as well a few days later. So I tell some friends to be careful if they decide to go into any forest especially if this forest is abnormally silent. As I do with everyone who comes forward I asked if they had ever experienced anything else unusual or unexplained either in this area or at another point in time. This is not the first time I have had a strange meeting in the forest. The first dates back to five or six years previously in August. I never heard of the name Dogman until a year ago. I must tell you that I have always loved nature, fields and forests since my childhood. I always went to the woods a lot. But that year, while I was going to fetch mushrooms, I felt uncomfortable without understanding why. Several times, I went back to the car running. I regained my senses then found myself confused and then I understood what was bothering me, it was the abnormal total silence in the middle of summer. One morning, I arrived early and got on a trail. I saw a black mass at the end and I thought it was a tree stump. I continued to search for my mushrooms and gradually moved closer to the tree stump. When I looked up, my heart started thumping so hard I felt like I could hear it outside my chest. I did not understand what I had in front of me, what I was seeing with my own eyes. Imagine a human being squatting, with their head on their chest sleeping. But it was not a human being. It was covered with black hairs everywhere. It was not a boar. It was not a badger. I did not understand what it was and especially as I had never felt in my life such a feeling of panic. I started backing up, praying that this creature would not wake up and I ran away without turning around. I have never been able to return to the forest after I made the observation of the creature I saw and told you about. In the meantime, I had learned the dogman's story, that people were seeing them and that they could be dangerous. In April, I was with my friend. My friend is a medium and can see and experience the dead. So, I think that if there is connection. Since I have known her I'm starting to see some weird things on my lot in front of my house with my camera at night. My little dog is also seeing and reacting to things I do not see with the naked eye. When he growls, if I take a picture in the dark, there are orbs, colored tubes, shapes that move. As far as the dog man is concerned, it's a very real creature. This story disturbs me. I really want to know, but I'm scared to go back. Yet at no time did it show any aggression. It could have arrived on us without problem. It was moving fast with long strides. I know that I will return to this forest despite my fear but I will not go alone. My friend went back to her home in the north of France. When she was face to face with this creature, 
A small inner voice pushed her to go with it, but her survival instinct took over. My friend told me she remembered a past life experience. She was hunted in the forest by humans. She had two wolves that accompanied her, a white one and a black one that protected her. When she was captured as a witch the people killed the wolf in front of her cruelly. Potential Dogman Sighting So I live in central Michigan, about 20 minutes north of Lansing, I was on my way home from work, it was about 1.45 in the morning. I was going about 55 and saw something about 200 yards away stand up on two legs out of the ditch on my passenger side take three to four running steps and completely clear a 24 road, and got about six to seven of air, it landed on the other side of the road, went down to all fours and took off running across the field on my driver's side, I slowed down to see if I could get a look at it and it was big, black and fast. It cleared 150-ish yards in a matter of seconds and ran into a stand of trees in the middle of the field and I lost sight of it. There was a decent amount of moonlight but all I could see was a rough outline, it had to have been at least 8 tall as the ditch is 3 to 4 deep and I could see the torso and head poking out of the ditch before it jumped. I don't know exactly what I saw but I feel like it fits the description of a dogman. The situation started around midnight on a Saturday night in 2007 when the witness was coming home from a friend's house in Benzonia, Michigan and taking the back way home to Traverse City. He stated that while traveling on Cinder Road, several miles outside of the town of Bendon, Michigan, he observed a pair of eyes reflecting off his headlights ahead of him. Thinking that it was probably a deer alongside of the road, he began to slow down. As he got closer however, he stated that the object was much larger and much darker than a deer. He said that by this time, he had slowed to around 30 miles per hour and was at that point several hundred feet from the creature which still hadn't moved. As he approached further, he stated that the only way he could describe the creature was being similar to a very large dark wolf. However he observed that this thing wasn't on four legs, but was upright his back two legs standing near a road killed deer. He estimated that the creature stood a little over six feet tall and had very dark fur. He stated that by now, he was going slow enough to bring his truck to a stop in the road and observe the creature which had not yet moved and was still staring at him. He mentioned that for a brief second, he believed that the object was a giant stuffed animal put there as some kind of prank due to the fact that he had never seen anything like this in his life, and that he was able to drive up on it as close as he was, without it having moved an inch. Before he could finish that thought, the creature then dropped to all four legs and sprinted across the road and disappeared into the woods on the other side of the roadway. The witness was frozen in his seat for a minute wondering what the heck had just happened. He stated, whatever that was, it was for real. As perplexed as he was that night over what he had seen, he was deathly afraid to go wandering into the woods to investigate further. The witness was asked if the animal had made any sounds before it disappeared and he said that he did not hear it make any noise. He was also asked if it could have been a bear and he stated, absolutely not. He is a bear hunter and regularly hunts in the upper peninsula, so he obviously knows what bears look like up close. White Dog Man I live in Minnesota and had an encounter in August of 2021 near a burial ground. It was just after dusk and my friend and I were leaving a fishing spot near the river. We saw what looked like a very large animal on four legs. Its body was white and the eyes were either very reflective from my headlamp or glowing white. It looked larger than a wolf but unnaturally skinny. It stared at us and we both felt like it wanted to attack us. I yelled at it to try and scare it away but it yelled back in what sounded like my voice. That was the moment when I realized it was not an animal. We were able to walk away and it never attacked us. My friend had the same experience. The only difference is that I was unable to make out any facial feature because its eyes were so bright. 
She said it appeared to have a wolf-like head. Could this be a dogman? From what I read it sounds similar. Two unusual cryptid canine encounter accounts. A tribe of four or more large humanoid wolves in California, and a red-eyed bipedal wolf-like creature seen in Suffolk County, Long Island, New York. The following accounts were recently forwarded to me, it looked like a werewolf. Growing up in the Northeast, I've seen pretty much every known animal that exists but on this day I encountered an animal that I have never seen before and that I hope I never see again. I was deer hunting on a cold December evening back in 2005 in California. I had walked to my tree stand about 3 p.m. that day. My stand was about a fourth of a mile from the road which isn't too far. I climbed up and got settled in for a few hours to see if I could get my first buck of the year. I hadn't seen much action and it was getting to those last few minutes I like to call, the best time. I noticed the woods went silent which I knew meant there usually was a large animal present. I just didn't know what kind of an animal or what nature. So, off to my right side, probably 100 feet or so, I heard something heavy walking towards me. I was thinking it was probably a big buck. What I saw next gave me nightmares for months. The only way I can describe it was it looked like something off of a werewolf movie. I didn't know what to do. I was in shock, like I couldn't even move. This animal or whatever you want to call it, came to within 30 yards of me walking on two legs. Now I had a .308 Magnum rifle with me, but honestly, I was afraid to move. After it went by me and over the hill, I drew a sigh of relief, like, thank God, it's gone, or at least I hope it is. After it went by I thought to myself, what the hell was that? Now at this time there was probably 15 to 20 minutes of light left and I didn't know whether to get down or wait. About two minutes later I heard more branches, something coming from the same place the first one came from. Then I saw three more of these creatures following on same path. Now these three were walking on four legs but these things were huge. To me to them they looked gigantic. If I had to guess I'd say they were about one foot taller than a deer would be in guessing they would weigh about 200 to 250 pounds, that's how large they were. I just sat there so still, so quiet that I don't think I even breathed. I texted my buddy who was about 300 yards away what I had seen. I don't know if he believed me or not but I've never returned to that place again. Me, my brother, and mom saw it during one of my brother's baseball games, which was on a field right next to the Pine Barrens, in Suffolk County, Long Island, New York. If we faced the field, the Pine Barrens were directly behind us. It was around 7 p.m. and dark out, so it was somewhat covered by the trees, but I could make out a silhouette of a what looked like a human that was hunched over and trying to remain low profile, but with a wolf's head and fur. It was hunched in a way that you could tell it was bipedal, and was about four foot tall while hunched over. It had glowing red eyes, which was the only reason that I was able to notice it was there in the first place due to all the woods being in the way. It stood about 100 feet away and stayed there for about 15 minutes, just watching, occasionally moving to slightly to one side or the other, like it was scouting us out. I told my mother, but she just told me and my brother that it was probably just a car's brake lights and that our mind was overreacting, and we were both young back then, so we accepted it. When I got older I brought it back up to my mom about what I saw and she said she saw it too and saw the wolf face and glowing eyes, but didn't tell me because she didn't want us to freak out. I should also mention that there were no roads that led to the wooded area where I saw the creature, so it was physically impossible for a car or anything to get through the hundreds of feet of dense pine barren forest. But again I was young, so I just took my mother's word. Real Life Dog Man Encounter Encounter 1, my dad was young and used to be a DJ. He was in his friend's house when his friend left him alone in the house. 
A tall dog head man body creature came out of the kitchen, chased him, he fell leaving out the door and it grabbed his heel but he kicked free. Now you may say maybe his friend scared him. Possibly but how do you explain encounter 2? Encounter 2, my dad, much older now, went in his basement to look for something. He noticed a box move. Boxes were stacked up. A dog head man body creature steps from behind the boxes and chase my father upstairs. He slammed the door and the thing hit the door. My oldest brother went to check but found nothing. Encounter 3, my dad was a war vet. It is possible he suffered from PTSD and maybe imagined the creature. What's strange is how is what he described the same as what many others have described in their encounters. When my dad would be asleep sometimes he would have night terrors of vicious dogs trying to attack him. Could that have been the reason he seen the dogman creature while wide awake? My dad could draw really good. What he drew was similar to other drawings of the creature. Except, he said its head looked more rat than dog. Several incidents involving sightings and encounters with cryptid canines in County Durham, UK and Northeast, England. These involve an upright canine and an earlier werewolf experience. The following accounts were recently forwarded to me, I live in the city of Durham in Northeast England, County Durham. I often go walking with the dog in the early hours and have seen a couple of scary but interesting creatures in my travels. However, when I have told people about these incidents, they laugh at me. The first incident, I was walking in passageway leading up to the cathedral. The dog stopped in her tracks and started growling. I got my torch from my coat pocket and put it on. I saw a dark, furry upright dog-like figure running at a fast speed away from me and it headed towards the river bank. I followed it down the passage onto the river banks and saw it run towards Previn's bridge. It then ran up to the road where I heard a car slam its brakes and stop. I ran up to the road. No sign of the creature. The car's driver was shaken, as she said it ran at the car and jumped over it with ease and ran up towards Potter's Bank area. Incident 2, I was in a small wooded area known locally as Maiden Castle. I have noticed on numerous occasions, things like broken trees that couldn't be broken by a human being. Camp-like structures and sticks randomly placed in and on the ground. I was walking around the part of the wood that looks over the river with a good view of Pella Woods, Old Durham Farm and over towards Sherburn Beck and Sherburn House. As I walked, I checked my watch and it was about 3.35 am in June and was fairly light. The dog started barking and jumping about. At first I couldn't see anything as I looked around and then I heard a deep grunt and heavy footsteps. I then saw a large tree shaking as though it was very windy, but it was the only tree moving like this as the weather was mild and not windy. I couldn't see what was making the tree shake or make the grunts and footsteps even though they were getting closer. I ran and the dog followed me towards the old Winnie Hill school and back into built up area. These events haven't put me off walking early in the morning like this. I am just more curious to what they are. Name withheld. There have been other cryptid canine sightings and encounters in County Durham, including the following, the witness describes a childhood incident that involved her and her brother just before Christmas 1979. The witness estimates she was around four years old at the time and her brother would have been seven. They lived in a two-bedroomed house in County Durham in Northeast, England. Peterlee was built in the late 1940s after the war for those who needed housing. This is her statement, I was about four years old when the most terrifying incident of my life occurred. I shared a bedroom with my brother at the time and he is three and a half years older than myself. On this particular night we were still awake in the very early hours. Though I don't remember the exact time, my brother asked me to go downstairs with him to get a drink of water as he kept us both awake during the night due to a cold and he now wanted a drink to help him stop coughing. It was I think around 1.30 am when I reluctantly agreed to go downstairs with him only because I was too scared to be left in our room alone. We got out of our beds, switched on the light and stepped out onto the small landing in the dark. 
It was only when we reached the top of the stairs and were about to descend that we saw what was on its way up the stairs. At the bottom of the stairs with one foot on one stair and the other foot on the next stair and its left hand on the banister was a creature which could most aptly be described as a werewolf. It was the size of an average man or maybe taller and it was covered in dark fur and it had large slanted green eyes which seemed to glow. We both ran back to our room after standing paralyzed by fear for what seemed like the longest time. We huddled together screaming hysterically until we woke our parents up. Both of our parents made a tour of inspection of the whole house and reported that there was nothing there. Nothing was out of the ordinary and they saw no creature. The brother remembers the creature's eyes were glowing red rather than green and he believes that the creature had either ears or horns on its head. He goes on to say in his account of the experience that there were stories at the same time of a werewolf seen by another child in the cellar of this home. Let me say first and foremost, I'm a man of logic and explanation. I never believed in ghosts or other cryptic beings really in my life but something happened the other night that really made me feel weird. So I live somewhere in between country and town here in Florida and see an abundance of wildlife. Foxes, coyotes, raccoons, all very normal to see. Since there being a large fox population around here and most people having chickens, Everyone has large dogs including me. I have a 70 pound boy and a 60 pound girl pit bull. They're fearless. They know this is their property and they protect it as such, alerting me if they hear something. And if they do, I open the door and they run out to chase off whatever it is. The other night, I woke up randomly and it was disturbingly quiet outside. Like not a single cricket. And my dogs were not on my bed like they usually are. All of a sudden, a howl like I never have heard went off like a siren that sent a chill down my spine. Like a deep yell almost, but definitely from an animal. I turned the lights on in my house to see my pit bulls at the back of their dog crate shaking. I've never seen a look on my dog's face like that before. Purely terrified. So I turned all the lights back off grabbed a flashlight and looked out my back window. What I saw about 200 yards off by a tree line near the back of my property was a dog thing, I vaguely saw it but it was very similar to a hyena build with a large amount of fur on its neck, like a mane almost and skinny back legs. Its head looked very wolf-like, with erect ears and a large skull. It was huge. It was so black it was hard to make out distinct characteristics, but its presence scared basically any living thing that was around it seemed that night. The next morning I went to the spot I saw the animal but saw no tracks or hair or anything, but I know what I saw and never saw anything like it before. Has anyone in Florida seen anything like this? We've been having a lot of dead dogs in the area. Dogs that are large and are being killed by something. Other people think it's the coyotes or a feral dog, but I think it's that thing I saw. Just seeing my dog so terrified really scared me. Sorry in advance for my lackluster English, but I'm a German dogman fan and recently heard about an encounter in southern Germany via an old paranormal forum in German. I always thought it was a strictly American phenomenon, so I of course was thrilled to hear about a German encounter. To translate for the Americans here, a girl's grandpa died recently and the family cleaned out his old house. In a box under his desk the girl found a locked box filled with photos. One is of a blurry dog man, there still is a version in the thread on page 10. She showed it Io her father and recalled, that he was playing at home and his grandpa, an avid forester and wildlife photographer came home bathed in sweat, yelled at the girl's grandma, yelled at her father and forbade him to ever enter the forest and shut himself into his study for two days. The girl's grandfather was always a kind man and his sudden shift in temper was so strange to the girl's then six-year-old father. Later the grandpa apologized and pleaded with both his son and wife to never enter the woods again and sell their part of the woods for good, 
They owned a sawmill so that wasn't a light-hearted decision I'd imagine. When the girl cleaned the house an old neighbor came over for a chat. German elders are notorious gossips, after all. When the old woman was shown the picture she recalled that it was customary in her day to sleep with closed windows, even in summer and that her parents told her to stay out of the woods because something, a child eater, the old woman was told a name but couldn't recall it, supposedly dwelled there. I was quite fascinated by the story and thought I'd share it with you. In return I would like to know, suppose that I want to, get acquainted with one of the beasts, or to look in Germany, are there more encounters? I know FRLM the Moorbach monster and Veable von Bedberg, also heard from the Hamburg encounter on Vic's podcast but that is BS. If a werewolf were to dwell in Germany, it would have to be in the south or east. Northern Germany is just too developed and flat. I have posted this a few times elsewhere, but this is something that will forever stick in my mind. I used to go to camp with my dad at a seasonal campground from 2005 to 2007 in upstate NY in the middle of Adirondack forests, and about a 20-minute drive from the closest town. It is now an agricultural farm and closed for unknown reasons. Anyway, families would bring their campers here and just leave them yearly. We were one of those families that did this. Luckily, there were other teens there around this time and we all really hit it off. We ranged from 13 to 17 years old within those years. This story takes place in the summer of 2006. A few of my camp friends and I were bored at around 1 p.m. one day, so we decided to hike into the woods that were behind all the campsites. We'll call my friends Jan, Bridget, Helen, and Aster. There were some well-traveled trails not far in, but we had already walked them many times. We decided to cut across the trails and go deeper into the woods. Eventually, we end up in an uphill, 30-foot wide clearing that had what appeared to be a car to the right in the distance. Aster immediately sprints to the car and exclaims that it is indeed a very old, very rusted and abandoned car. The rest of us walk to our very enthusiastic friend. I remember feeling something was very off about that car and requested that we all get away from it. Aster laughs and jokingly says it could be rigged with bombs. Bridget hit him in the arm and yells at him shut up. Get away from that car. Who knows what could be inside it? Odd, I thought to myself, maybe she feels the same way I do. We start to walk past the car upward toward what looked like a larger clearing. Helen grabbed my right arm and walked beside me, seemingly terrified. Me being about 15 at the time, I welcomed her clinging to my arm and really didn't notice her terror. As we reached the large clearing, the ground flattened. Directly in front of us, there is a pond that is completely still. To the left of us, there's a yellow, two-story house that seems to be abandoned. This clearing is completely surrounded by the rest of the woods. Upon seeing this, I remember the feeling of dread washing over me. Meanwhile, Aster and Jan are running toward the house. Bridget, Helen and I all called out to them and told them to come back and not go near the house. Instead, They noticed an open window and they both climbed inside. As soon as Bridget saw them doing this, she yelled out fine. If you two want to have sex in some creepy house, be my guest. Her scream seemed to fall flat with no echo, almost like it was blocked and couldn't make it to the house. It was eerie. Bridget finally looked over at Helen and I sounding defeated. She said, come on, let's just go back to camp. This place is messed up. We concur and start to head back toward the downward smaller clearing when we hear what sounds like Jan's scream. We look back to see Aster and Jan are already out of the house and almost to us. They are both whiter than freshly bleached sheets and are motioning for us to leave. The hike back to camp was pretty uneventful, but Aster and Jan refused to tell us what they saw in there. Aster was still trying to act silly and cool, but he kept glancing behind us. Jan didn't say a word the entire time. We got back to camp and it was 5.30 p.m. It really didn't feel like we were gone for that long. Whole thing was weird. 
We all agreed we'd meet up later that night after we ate and showered etc. Later that night, around 10.30 p.m., the same group of us all met up near the registration building because it had a light similar to a street light. We decided to head down into a field that was at the entrance of the campground beside the dirt road leading from the road back to camp. It was a new moon that night and we could see the stars more clearly than ever before. It was the brightest I have ever personally seen them. We all exchanged spooky stories in that dark field for quite some time. For some inexplicable reason, all five of us stood up at the same time and began to walk back to the dirt road heading back to camp. As we reached the light by the registration office, we all then simultaneously turned around and the light above us flickers out. We all see a tall, bipedal figure moving in the field we were just in. It moved across the field quickly and silently. Chills went up and down my spine and it felt like the cold was trying to reach into my brain itself. The figure was darker than darkness itself and appeared to be taller than all of us, hunched and almost appeared to have spikes protruding from it in some way. We were frozen. None of us moved at all until the light above us suddenly came back on. The figure was gone, but it was unnaturally cold still for a summer night. We all ran to our respective camps. Fast forward to winter 2009. I was telling an ex-girlfriend of mine, let's call her Kitty, about the above story. She is the type of girl that says that she's very sensitive to paranormal events and is always intrigued about them as opposed to being afraid most of the time. She somehow convinces me that she needs to go to the camp I used to go to, but it has been closed and is now the agricultural farm I mentioned above. I decided to drive her and I up there one night in my 2000 Buick Century Limited. Mind you, this car was a beast and could make it through snow with ease due to a really nice traction control system and winter tires. We arrive around 10.30 pm and the dirt road isn't plowed out, no surprise. I wasn't worried and decided to drive in anyway. My car's a champ and is going through just fine. I am passing the registration building and get that same feeling of dread I felt long ago on that day at the house. The engine cuts. The car's power is gone. The car refuses to start. I look over at my ex and she's staring straight ahead there looking at us. What the? I try to start the car again and it starts normally, but my traction control is no longer working and the time has been reset to 12 o'clock. The car is spinning the tires somehow. We're still stuck. My headlights were on and I happened to look at the trees and see multiple of the same figures my camp friends and I saw, running between the trees in the distance and my blood went cold. I yelled I don't need this, I'm getting us out of here. I turned the car off and started again. Traction control light is gone and I am able to move the car. I slam it into reverse and reverse down the dirt road back to the main road that will head back into civilization. I slam it in drive and the supercharger and that baby was one of the sweetest and most relieving sounds I had heard that night. The drive back has forest on the same side of the road as the camp for pretty much 10 of the 20 mile trip to town. My ex is staring out the window. Out of nowhere, she mutters something quietly. I tell her I can't hear her and ask if she's alright. She doesn't look at me, but I am able to make out what she said this time they're following us. They want us. They're the most evil thing I have ever felt and they want us to go into the house with them. I tell her that it's going to be okay and that we'll be safe soon. I tell her to stop looking out the window and just focus on clearing her mind. We made it back into town and I went into the closest gas station that was open and grabbed water and a snack for both my ex and I. I asked the clerk what time it was because both of our phones were dead and I wanted to reset my clock in my car. It's currently 3.49 am, you sure are out early. I just nodded and paid for my things. I brought my ex to my place so she wouldn't get in trouble for getting in so late since she lived with her mom. We never spoke of it again and broke up about a month later. I have told others about this story and I have had many tell me to bring them there. I refuse to bring them or even tell them where this place might even be. Nothing can explain the weird things in that place and I shudder to this day still thinking about it.
There's something in my garden. I live alone, have done for about a year now after breaking up with my ex, and it's been mostly great to have my own space in my own house where I'm free to do whatever I want, whenever I want. That said, I spend most of my time in the evenings upstairs playing video games and watching YouTube videos. I don't really have a social life, but that's okay with me. I've never felt uneasy in my own house, until about a month ago, when I went to the kitchen at night to make a drink. Now, my kitchen is overlooked by my overgrown garden, which is in turn overlooked by some woods. It's a fairly rural neighborhood, and it's very quiet at night which makes it a friendlier environment for some wildlife to come out. I'll often see foxes and deer, and I've been woken up at night by the scream of a fox at 4 a.m. once, and they like to hang around outside the front of my house because there's easy access from there to my back garden and then into the woods. My kitchen has this big window which looks right into the garden, but at night when the lights are on, I can barely see more than a few feet ahead of the window as it acts sort of like a mirror. Well, on this particular night, the few feet ahead of me that I could see was all this thing needed to make itself visible to me. I hadn't noticed it until I looked up and out of the window after making my drink. It was a bipedal creature, skinny but very tall with hind legs, and had no hair. It sounds ridiculous to say this but it looked similar to the werewolf Lupin transformed into in the Prisoner of Azkaban movie, only taller and more humanoid, and its mouth was tiny but protruded, similarly to a canine's. It had no ears from what I could see. It just stayed there looking at me with these completely white, tiny eyes. Its head was tilted to the side and its bottom jaw was slightly open. I didn't even know how long it had been there, I was in the kitchen for about a minute before I even bothered to look out of the window. I just froze. You think you can rationalize what you do in situations like this, but I was frozen in terror. I was telling myself to move but my body felt icy cold, I couldn't do anything. Eventually, after like 10 seconds, it felt much longer, I managed to move and ran out of the room, not daring to take my eyes off the creature, and as I did so, its head rotated to follow me as I left to the comfort of the upstairs, which was the creepiest thing about it. Since then, which was about a month ago, I've not gone into my kitchen at night, save for a few necessary occasions. I'm preparing everything I need before it gets dark, and then staying upstairs for the rest of the night. If I absolutely need to go in the kitchen, I'll rush so that I can get out ASAP. That feeling you get when you turn all the lights off before you have to go back upstairs, and feel like you're going to be chased upstairs by some unknown entity? That's the feeling I get when I need to go in my kitchen at night. I lived in the boonies of Nee PA for a long time and never had any encounters myself, just a lot of weird energy fluctuations and extremely bad GTFO right now vibes in some places. When I was in my teens one of my merit badge assignments in the Boy Scouts was to spend a night with a buddy in the middle of nowhere after the counselors dropped us off. We were in super deep that time and still managed to sleep great. I know there's a ton of sightings and encounters just 3-4 to four hours from here to the west, PA is a bit of a long state, but I'm fairly confident they haven't migrated this way yet. If there are DM out this way they keep very low profiles. My dad's place is nestled in the most densely populated white-tailed deer county in the country, at least it was for many years running, and the population is still a nuisance. They have no natural predators here anymore. If DM were here there'd be significantly less deer and other critters, fauna is just everywhere in the knee. I also did a lot of exploring slash day trips into some deep, Nicely hidden mountainous areas with creeks and waterfalls and caves in Jersey and talked with some of the local farmers who spend all day patrolling their 500 to 800 acre plots and they haven't seen a single thing ask you. Remember, farmers know every twig that gets broken on their land. Not a single odd thing to report. Actually I got permission to live in the woods and make a small camp on a 20 acre plot that was completely surrounded by other several hundred acre plots just a few small country hideouts and big horse range near some mountains. 
I lived back there for a few months one winter season totally alone and never had any issues. A crow would intentionally wake me up at the same time every morning. One night I got kinda scared though. It was a really quiet night, too quiet, and the horse breeders dogs went apes at something near the border where the two properties converged. Whatever it was, was only 60 feet from me, but out there it's so dark at night you can't see anything past the fire. Regardless I was completely on the ground in a little survival shelter I made out of fallen trees and a tarp. Nothing messed with me for three months. I used to be really, really into late night excursions. I'd fix up my pack and head out at 11 or 12 and come home an hour before sunrise all throughout the summer months. I'd go totally alone. Granted, I wouldn't do now about 85% of the stuff I did in my teens and 20s just because, but I figure if I was to be accosted by a large, aggressive cryptid out here in Nee PA it would have been during one of my many quite brazen solo adventures. This part of the country doesn't have much to be scared of except bad humans and alien abductions. I have a strong, strong gut feeling that this area won't be so safe and innocuous in the near future. Furthermore, there's definitely something in the Pine Barrens that isn't friendly. Pine groves in general, I've noticed, have something rather ominous about them. I don't stray into large pine forests at all anymore. Dogman or Werewolf Shot at PA Campsite May 2020 This post is in regard to the dog man that was killed in a central Pennsylvania campsite in the first week of May, 2020. It was shot in the face with 12 grams OO buck and it went down in an ensuing battle of flying lead kicking and screaming. There were a dozen or so witnesses to the carcass and I know many pictures were taken. My pictures were deleted that night. I have no interest in speaking directly with anyone. I am posting here in hopes that you are one of those witnesses and that you read this. My hope is that one of you managed to keep one or more pictures hidden from the boss that night. If so, please post them and or email them to a researcher so that I and in fact we can get closure. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.